is times were different of course i would but i'm not making a pilgrimage to some place that's probably half underwater by now history books say kainang city was a dump Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Yeah, the audio was coming through. Yeah, I was I was messing around a little bit there. And I don't know, I kind of feel like it might work quite well if you could have the ambient sounds of the town in the background of the login screen. That didn't work for you guys, though. The thing is, the NPCs started talking quite specifically about Canther and about how it's flooded and stuff. And I realised it just didn't quite work. So, uh... Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, hi guys. Today we are going to be doing a little bit more of Bits of Frost Frontier and so forth. But I've got some other cool things I want to do too. Um, uh, and that specifically, we're going to be going a bit further on some collections. Uh, obviously the end of the year is coming up and I want a really awesome account tour. If you guys don't know what this is, it's like, uh, t uh two years ago now. I did a big update on, like, all the progress of my channel. Like, uh, not my channel, of my, uh, in-game account. And 
like uh, all the rewards that you can go for, all the stuff that had kept me occupied since launch, all the things I was excited about. And it was pretty cool. It's quite, it's one of those videos that number one's kind of interesting to look at just to see a bit more into what I've been doing with the game. But also, you, if you watch a video like that, you tend to be quite inspired about other things you might want to do too. So, uh, so I'm going to do another one, like a, a post Heart of Thorns one. I had a year to work on Heart of Thorns stuff. And uh, so, yeah. Um, how goes the Uzlan collection? The Uzlan collection's doing pretty good. Let's go in game. I'll show you guys what's going on here. So, there we go. You should have game audio now. Uh, the Uzlan collection's doing pretty good. We actually finished it. I don't want to mute that in the background anymore. Um, that was a while ago that we finished that. <clears throat> Uh, so if we go collections, that's a rare collection. It has no right being a rare collection. Oh my gosh, somebody donated. We already have a duck. We already have an ultra spud. Joe Bum. Wood and potato. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, Uzalem, we finished. 99% uh, on the stream. Then the, like, the last one I needed was like to do an adventure. And I did two adventures the morning after that stream was over. And I got it straight away. So that's fine. Uh, the I, I want to have all the basic collections done again. So we might on this stream look into Primordus weapons. Might. I don't know. They're kind of difficult to craft, aren't they? But then the other thing I just did the other day, uh, and by the other day I mean yesterday, was, oh, no, sorry, I mean today, was the Laystone armor? Maybe that's on my summary? Yeah, Laystone armor. Because this gives you an Ascended armor box as well. And I basically just had to spend a bunch of machetes that I'd slowly been building up in my account slots over the past Christ knows how long. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so we are going to get into the new map. You guys are going to you know, see that stuff. If you never managed to tune in on yesterday's stream, you don't quite know what you're missing out on. Uh, we can try that out now. I've got a few things to talk about. And while I do it, I'm just going to nip uh, nip around and grab my regular daily. Okay? So, uh, and I'm just going to do this like I normally would. So Maguma Vista would be like somewhere in the jungle. And we'll grab that. And, uh, and so, yeah, there's a couple of other things to say. So, uh, some people on Discord have been asking me to talk about this. Uh, this idea of the guild split we were talking about the past couple of weeks uh, on the streams, I don't think it's going to be happening. I'm not going to say 100, 100, 100%, but the chances have been getting slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. We just don't really have a great way of keeping everyone together. Now, I would love to uh, do it in a lot of ways, but also it's going to be a lot of hassle, it's going to be a lot of admin, a lot of micromanagement. We're thinking of instead taking the 500 people guild that we currently have, and just trying to make those as active as possible. Bring in this, like we've got 130 online at the moment, bring in that up, bring in the number of people who rep up, hopefully without doing rep force rules, stuff like that. So, I don't think the branch split's going to be happening. For what it's worth, the poll won for EU. EU was going to be the one and might be the one, if, if it actually happens, to um, to have to rebuild the hall. Or, or get to rebuild the hall, I should say. And uh, and so, yeah, that, that's how that would have gone. So, Straits of Devastation, I go for my ore forager now. And um, because I think here you can get at least some stuff that's vaguely useful. So, yeah, there'll be no wall between EU and NA. And people have been asking me to talk about that on the stream. So, uh, so yeah, that that's one thing. Uh, the other thing as well, just by the way... Is if I move that, this should work quite well. This should work, I hope. And I hope I don't have any like, anything like damaging on there. I think it should be okay. I think that I think this is perfectly all right for me to show off. Um, here we have a spreadsheet. This is the lottery, guys. So uh, you could. So this is a new thing we're trying out for like rewards and giveaways and things on stream. So what you can see here is our giveaway, and you've got that prize pool there of currently, if you if you decide you want to be a part of the lottery, uh, now there's a doc hopefully in chat which is going to get pinged as I talk about this here. If you want to be a part of the lottery, uh, just click that link in Twitch chat, and it will tell you everything you need to do. It's very, very, very simple, but you just like buy as many tickets as you want, and up to a max, and then you can be in for the prize pool to win about 200G. So, uh, so it's pretty good, I think. And, uh, and so I set that up quickly before the stream as well there. Uh, so that was another little something as well. Uh, spoilers, what do I think about the connection between Bram and Svane? How's that a spoiler question? Last instance provide most info about this. I don't, I don't see how the last in instance provided a ton of info about that. Am I missing something? I will be a bit more relaxed with spoilers today. I'm anticipating my story video will go up super quick. And just, when that goes up, that's kind of when the, the lid's off the spoilers on me. I sort of feel like if you're playing, or if you're watching, if you're reading, if you're playing, if you're doing something, right? 
and you're turning up to streams on them, at some point you've got to just understand, all right, spoilers might be a ban. But yeah. Uh, do you think that one day they'll open up that blurry part of the Steam Spur Mountains? The blurry part of Steam Spur. See, Steam Spur is... Su you mean this bit here. I've speculated this could be a good guild hall at, at one point before. Or it could be like two guild halls. And they've got the, they've got like a dual nature or something. One's very high, one's very low. I don't know. But um, Steam Spur is such a weird term. It's such a weird idea for a region these days. So odd. Because Sparkfly doesn't feel like Steam Spur. It's like they had law written and they wanted to differentiate this area of the Shiver Peaks because they recognized that such a huge amount of Tyria is mountainous and they wanted a different aesthetic here. And then when it came to release, they were like, fuck, we don't have enough time to make a whole new region tile set or whatever. Let's just dump a bunch of Maguma jungle technically stuff here. And the result is it, th th this region just kind of doesn't exist. I'll be quite excited to see if Living World Season 3 takes us there because then you get thermal vents and things. And at least with thermal vents, it, it, it kind of like, it sort of makes sense as Steam Spur. Do you know what I mean? What do you think about Orin? Oh, Orin. Orin. Uh, are we are we mind washing her? Mind washing. That's a weird way of putting it, man. Mind washing. I don't know. Oh, so you're saying because because she's young and rambunctious and and uh and and childish and the fact we have to teach her things is that brainwashing? I think that's brainwashing to the same extent that every culture brainwashes their children to right. act a certain way. Sure, if that's the 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 horrible sort of <laughs> viewpoint you want to force on it, yeah, we're, we're manipulating the way she'll act as an adult. That's what all parents do, right? Um, alright. So they want the Ship of Sorrows mini dungeon. The Ship of Sorrows. Straits of Devastation. Ship of so That's a mini dungeon? That does not count as a mini dungeon, Arena Net. Come on. This is not a mini dungeon. Some of these mini dungeons, I say in quotes, are so short. Man, come on. Corteria overhaul. Give them a chance to look back at them. There's a dragon underwater. Or such a huge dragon that its reflection still works perfectly on the bottom of the seabed. So we'll grab this. Yeah, our cheeky little two gold. There's been a lot of talk recently about XP capping and the raid lock for Heart of Thorns maps. It's causing a lot of events to be ignored. Or causing people to uh, refuse to help out with a lot of events because it essentially reduces rewards to 50 copper for things. Wait, what do you mean? I know what the I know what the raid lock is. The raid lock is if you don't go into a raid uh, and a new mastery comes out for it. You can't, like, trigger it to start it, so then you can never earn spirit shards anymore, right? And it won't keep charging up. And this is, like, a weird thing that people don't like. That's the problem there, right? What, what does that relate to specific events and people not doing them? I don't understand what that is. Fill me in. Let me start. Bram never got frozen where rocks and blah, 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 blah. Alright, that's an interesting theory, Grez. Grez149. That's an interesting theory. I see what you mean. But there's there's space for it. Maybe. But I mean you gotta figure out time scales and what's going on with it. And yeah, you know, I I don't think that if the theory's trying to push on lean on an angle like oh bro, is it secretly evil or something, I I don't think I quite buy that. But okay, I can sort of see what you mean. Did I watch the raid tournament? I suggested something similar a few weeks back. Actually, no. I think it might be going on right now as well, by the way. I, I kind of don't want to leech too many viewers from them. Um, but I think they, they might be doing it again. I don't, I, I've really not followed any of it or of how it's been working. But yeah, I did suggest something similar. I think my idea was cooler. But at the end of the day, I haven't put in any hard graft to make something work. So all power to them. I think it's awesome that they're running something like that. And that it's getting a bit of viewership too. I think it's great. I mean, it'd be nice if it got more, but they're going to need to be bigger on other platforms first. The general conversation is that people are skipping anything non-meta because it, almost the entire reward for doing them is the XP, and that's where the raid lock on the XP goes into the void. What do you mean? Where's this general conversation? Who says that the main reward for meta achievement... You're, you're talking about meta events. 
What do you mean the main reward for meta events is XP? If that was true, then no one would be doing them anymore because you get XP so fast. Most of us are in a constant state of having our masteries maxed out. No, a lot of those metas you do for the map-specific currencies and all that other stuff. Not XP. Who's refusing to do meta events because of XP? That's crazy, isn't it? I swear that's not a thing. Anyway, so, a uh, bit of Frost Frontier. Let's have a quick uh, cheeky little run up here. I think I will show off a bit of the bitter cold today, guys. And we also might head into Fractals for a moment. Um, I'll, I'll tell you why. Uh, Gel make champions defeated. Six out of nine. Look, there's a couple up. Let's go kill one of these. Um, uh, we might go into Fractals, and I might open it up to LFG. And then if you guys on the stream want to jump in by prowling LFG on EU, then that's cool. But uh, again, because of the account tool, what I'm thinking of doing is clearing as much of my stuff as possible. So legendary armor is as done as it possibly can be right now. But legendary backpacks, I've got to do the ad infinitum collection here, uh, which I only dinged last night. So I've got to do this collection, which will give me the recipe to make the actual final thing. Um, so there's a few different things I need to do in there. I need to get some... Uh, well, I've already got all my pristines for the day. But I need to do stuff like... Um, I don't know, kill my train in under 25 minutes on scale 98. I don't know if we'll be able to just randomly pug that on the stream. Oh god, we're lagging. This has been happening to me on EU. Is this happening to you guys? Look at this, look at this, look at this lag. This is crazy. I'm assuming it's not happening since they're trying to do the raid tournament right now. For everyone. But I've been getting this on EU lately. I've been getting this. Oh no, 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 we lost and we DC'd completely. What is this? Wow. All right, let's try and let's try and ding back in there. All right, and also uh, I'll be right back. One second, guys. Just just one moment. Uh, I'll be back in before you know. Okay, we're back, we're back, we're back. Sorry, just had to sort some stuff out. Looks like we're in game again and we didn't get kicked. However, we did sort of lose the storm, <laughs> which is unfortunate. Okay, all right. So anyway, if you guys want to play with me, just like the NA people got to, uh, I'm going to form a squad and you can just join on me if you want. Uh, tell me, don't be scared to spam something in chat if you, uh, if I miss one of your messages as well, guys. Pizza is the meaning of 42. Love pizza and you will live. Wait, so 42 is the meaning of life, and the meaning of 42 is pizza. Pizza is the meaning of life. I, I can be on board with this. The conversations are in the forums, and it's about skipping non-meta events, because all it gets you is XP. Not on meta events that give map currencies and stuff. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, uh, well, uh, the raid lock thing's stupid. It, it is stupid. It's actually my one big regret about my Mastery's review is that I haven't mentioned the raid lock thing, because it's just not something I really have ever come up against or, or uh, I didn't think about it which was a mistake and I, I I think I should maybe I can edit it in there somewhere 
Um, I haven't talked about the raid lock. My problems with Master Use have been in other areas. But yeah, I, I, I think that should totally be fixed. That should totally be changed. That should totally go away. However, I don't think that's the only solution to getting... And the only problem with people not doing... Sorry, I just want to lower the combat volume a little bit. I don't think that's the only problem with people not doing non-meta events and skipping a lot of stuff. And this is a problem that, that pervades all of the open world too. Uh, and I, I think uh, that comes down to making currencies a little bit more valuable, like karma, right? Like if karma was... I don't know, it's hard to sort of express uh, the world we live in at the moment. This squad feels so fast. This is disgusting, guys. This is disgusting. This is unbelievable. All right, look, you should be spamming these squads up like this when we, when, I mean, I'm sickened. I'm sickened by how easy it is to get people to play with right now. It's a a outrageous. This is like when we were doing friggin' uh, personal story permadeath runs. And we'd just have like, not just one squad, well, squads weren't even really much of a thing back then. But we'd have just like ridiculous numbers of people just, just charging around in normal open world maps. But yeah, like, you know, if Karma had a lot more value, people would start seeing events a lot better and the game in general would have felt so much more rewarding. I really think that the um, the lack of decent Karma syncs and specific, you know, uh, um, I don't know, it comes down to the lack of importance on gear as your level and as well and stuff. But, uh, you know, I really think that was one of the most damaging things about making Guild Wars 2 feeling, feel like a rewarding game. Having a nice shiny ding and golden sparkly thing in the corner is one thing, but when you really don't care that much about what you're getting from it, it undervalues, it undercuts a lot of the experience of the game. Anyway, so yesterday I did want to show you what it's like to climb around on the trees. Uh, for most players who have already done map comp and stuff, there's not too much reason to, but you do get unbound magic up there, and there's a daily for doing unbound magic. Uh, on this map, you tend to only get the magic in interesting places. That much is at least true. Um, you get like these cool little fungal platforms. Alright, thank you. These ice breed must be stopped. We will see. Um, and then maybe we'll head into the bit of cold. I'll show you guys how to get there. And it's, it's a little bit weird in there, but yeah. What do I expect on a Sunday evening on EU? Yeah, fair enough. Maybe. Maybe. Ever had a purple sweet potato? They're pretty good. Actually, no, I've never had a purple sweet potato. Ever. Now, I am a fan of potatoes. That's not why I'm called wooden potatoes. I am a fan of potatoes. I like a good jacket. I like wedges. I like chi- I, li Literally, I, you probably can't give me a potato dish I don't like. And they're all so varied and beautiful. Potatoes only topped by egg in terms of being incredible uh, food. Events aren't really rewarding. Even if you need karma, says Sebastian. I myself will struggle with karma. And the best way for me right now to get karma is by not by doing events, but by killing mobs in the new maps with the karma buff. Right, like, uh, again, uh, I, I, I don't know what to say about that, man. I, I, I really don't. I, it upsets me. I like having, you know, well-understood space for certain things. Karma should be a currency for doing events. Right? But then it slowly like started shifting a little bit to, oh no, karma's a currency you get for, uh, that th you can't buy on the gem store kind of thing, right? And then it was like, oh, now karma is just killing stuff. Well, now it's the same as XP. What are you doing? Why? Stop it. I know it's only on these couple of maps, but that's where the majority of your pop- I just don't like it. I don't- I, 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 It really frustrates me. It's like Dragonite Ore dropping from these winter berries, right? Like, most players will just be like, Oh, I'm getting Dragonite Ore, that's cool. And I, a part of my monkey brain does that too. But at the end of the day, it's losing its purity of place, its sense of place. Isn't it supposed to be uh, a world boss? Ascended material? Dragonite Ore? And now what is it? Now it's, oh, just pick berries if you ever want it. Don't worry about that as a valuable, you know, drive for players to do one specific thing and not another. It's, 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 it's not that at all. Alright, okay, so. I'm just going to go through the whole thing to get into the bit of cold, alright? Even though I don't need to. So, number one, uh, on yesterday's stream I showed you the berry farm. And I showed you how to complete this heart over here. Killing trolls, protecting griffins, killing corrupted, um, corrupted griffins, running eggs, okay? Now, you've got two ways of getting the items you care about. You can pick up an abandoned griffin egg, like so. And then you can uh, put it into the incubator. By the way, one of my favourite lines of dialogue in this patch is the quaggan talking about how it incubated them by holding eggs in its mouth. 
I just liked that. I don't know what it is about that, but I really liked it. I'll tell you guys, I really want Shusha to do as well. I, there's something about running around without on stage has just made me want that shield. I don't know what it is, but uh, it's really getting under my skin. So here you go. Oh, this one's especially good. And then it'll ding, and you can pick her up after it, after a little while. You're going to get a cold resistant eggshell. If you don't want to run those, look at that lag. That was crazy. If you don't want to run them yourself, you can just buy them. I'm wrong. I thought you could just buy them, but you can't. Okay. You know what? I really want to buy this just to like reduce her vendor wares, but it's over 100,000 karma. I mean, again, these the new maps, don't get me wrong. Oh, somebody triggered the dialogue. We have to wait now. Here we go. Not the sharpest icicles on the roof, are they? There we go. Now we get a few seconds before our dialogue comes back again. <laughs> Even Grawl is smarter than the Svania. <laughs> um, I've completely forgotten what I was saying. Yeah, the new maps are, go are great for Karma Sings. They are. But th I think the rest of the game needed to be as well. And Corteria struggled for not having them. Is essentially my point. Likes the quag and dislikes the script. I don't even know you anymore, WP. I don't re necessarily like the, the quag. What I dislike about the script, I dislike about the quag and too. Don't misunderstand me. Okay, so here, all right, what you need is a, is a firestone, which I can't actually buy at the moment. Do you? So I guess you do need to build his little thingy. So to get a firestone, I think what you're meant to do it's just like in the story. You come out the front of the cave. You're going to grab three sticks. Okay. This, this map's got a bit of a tendency to have maybe a few too many items. Like it spams your inventory up a bit too much. Because you've got the Svanir armor and stuff too. But it's not so bad. But yeah, I dislike the Quaggan for all the same reasons that I dislike the script. But, alright. This map, I, I, I wouldn't be offended if so offended if there was script on this map. My, my, my thing with the script was because they were, you know, like, come on. The, the Fire Island chain was so... Oh, God, look at the lag. It's crazy. It was, it, was, it was a very specific, very deadly, very scary, very exciting idea for a place, okay? And so, obviously, in Guild Wars 2, making it an open world map, it can't be the same as it was really in Guild Wars 1. It's not the same style of gameplay. You can't, you know, ask for open world content to be infuriatingly difficult and, you know, obnoxious and blah, 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 and, and whatever. So, I've, I've come around to understand why they put the script there. I genuinely have. But my original comments and upset about the script in that episode was it just felt like they were forced into a place that they didn't have to be. However, the Quaggan, a, a variety of Arctic Quaggan living in, you know, the northern reaches of the world, that's not so bad to me, right? It doesn't matter so much. And I do like the comedy that comes from there. And they are funny. And they are kind of cute. Um... You know, some of my biggest problems with Quaggan at the release of Guild Wars 2, Corteria Cort Quaggan, is because one of the main places you interact with them is, is honestly like the pits of the personal story. The pits of the personal story is when they, they made 15 different supposedly separate storylines that are basically the exact same thing with very minor tweaks and alterations, and that's it. And that's when you're dealing with the lesser races of Tyria, where you can go through the the, the, the the actual dialogue on the wiki, and you can go through in-game, and you can look, and they basically just record an ever-so-slightly different version of the exact same line for Tybalt, Siren, and Forgul, like 15 times for every single... And each of those 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 different varieties has got five missions in the long chain. And they it's just it's the absolute pits. And, and, you know, the problem that came there with one of those being the Quaggan was the Quaggan got extra douched over because the Quaggan um, uh, appear in those side-by-side -side cutscenes and look ridiculous. All of the lesser races look ridiculous, but of the, of the worst of them were the Quaggan. It is just like... The most placeholder, just awfully implemented part of the personal... It really is. I mean, there's other areas of the personal story that are epic letdowns because there's, there's such special moments like Claw Island and the attack on Fort Trinity and the, and the, and the battle on the airship at the end. You know, those, those you can tell are supposed to be epic story beats and they're a letdown. But in terms of just pure quality drop, all right, and just, just absolute pits, uh, it's the lesser races of Tyria arc. 
And the Quaggan are a part of that. And the Quaggan, ugh, they do not, they do not work well. Let me just say. Quaggan on this map, I can get behind them. They're not so bad. And yeah, there's something about, I mean, nobody, com I thought I'd get some comments on it, all right? But that shield, when you're running around with it, it does remind me of like a Jack Sphere from uh, Final Fantasy X. It really reminds me of a Jack Sphere. So anyway, this is an event to rebuild uh, Chuka Kuka, who is actually an old abandoned Norse statue to Jora. Um, when the trailer came out and we saw this statue, I kind of thought maybe we'd see a lot of Norn stuff in this map. You really don't. There's very little Norn influence going on here. The closest you get is the Sons of Svarnir, who are ridiculously Flanderized. So... Sorry, having a sip of Coke there. And, um... So, uh... It's kind of funny that there's this statue here. They don't explain who built it, where it came from, any of that stuff. It's just sort of how it how it influences the Grawl. Oh, come on, rebuild the statue. I'm waiting for it to rebuild. This is mental. <laughs> Oh, look, it's the Kodan. The Kodan's walking at about one mile an hour. I actually wasn't just trying to rock out to SOB there. I wanted to hear the dialogue and stuff of it being rebuilt. He's going to go here, he's going to hammer it, and then it's going to play the animation. We're going to rebuild the statue. Here we go, finally. He's, he's finally got over to it. <laughs> There she is, goddess personified. Thank you for your help. Chococo, precious goddess, queen of Grawl Hearts. You know, I love that the Kodan seem to respect Jora. That's kind of cool. Uh, so someone said, WP, do you think that the devs work on SAB? That was from Staticon. I hope so. I, 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 I... Uh... I'm so all over the place, right? Because for a long time, I was, like, expecting the absolute most minimal, tiny... All right, so the reason we actually came here, by the way, were to kick chickens for the uh, for building a little totem. So here's a chicken. You can kick these in the new map, and you get a feather the first time each one gets kicked. Um, and this is funny because this is a little bit of, like, you can sort of kill steal from each other on this by kicking the chicken first. Which they don't usually do in Guild Wars 2. There's also an achievement to kick a chicken endlessly until it explodes and one-shots you. So that's why we're in here. So we've got three feathers already. I think we need four total. And then we're done with... Uh, and then we're using all these materials we've gathered, we can build a little thing. So here's a, here's a final rooster over here. Lovely. And he's been kicked. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm so all over the place. For a long time, I was like expecting very minimal. Very, very little from Marina. Please, just very, very, very little. But then it's like... Ugh. I don't know, they're doing really well now. Now, they've explicitly said to us, as far as I recall, explicitly said there will be no further updates to Super Adventure Box. And I don't think that was just within the context of that first year. Rack. You enter our territory. Step softly. Where, where do I build a thing? I don't know where I build a... Uh, a totem to get a firestone. We take all these materials and, materials and we build a totem for the Gruul. Is my story active? No. Oh, is it because I restarted the story? It's not going to let me? Do I need the story to be active? Really? You need the story active to do this? Crack in the eyes. Continue the story. In forums, it's bugged for many people. Well, I guess it's bugged for me as well. 
Well, you build a thing, and then and then the girl trusts you beyond even just doing their heart. And then they say, oh, you can buy a Firestone. Luckily, I've already got one, so it's okay. Um, but yeah. So anyway, yeah, like I say, I think they, they quite explicitly... Tell me if the volume's too loud, by the way, guys. Uh, I think they, they quite explicitly said, you know, like, um... Uh, we're not going to make any... We're not going to develop on it further. But maybe they will. Maybe maybe now that they're, they're doing so much, they got their stuff together. Can we have the dream of having uh, a fractal team, a raid team, a balance team, a competitive team, a gem store team, an expansion team, three living world teams, and a super adventure box team? Can we do it? Can we go? Go, go, SAB. Go, go. I don't know, man. You buy it from the heart vendor if you finish the story. Alright, maybe I just have to recomplete the story. Maybe it's not a bug then. Maybe I'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. Anyway, so now we're going to go down to the hot springs. We're going to do this heart. Don't know whether I came here for my berries today. It doesn't look like I did. Uh, and then while they're at it as well, if we're talking about adding loads of teams, add in a uh, little Corteria overhaul team and a cheeky little Guild Wars 1 development team. There you go. Perfection. Mwah. Beautiful. Beautiful. That is the height that, that this franchise could reach. How amazing would that be? All of that stuff. All going on. And jo Josh Foreman is on all the teams. <laughs> I love that. That's funny. It's like players, you know, especially me, right? We can, we can be so... We can expect so much. And we can have such high standards and such unrealistic standards and such wild, stupid, unimplementable ideas, okay? And I love that, that this is basically that, but you've got that added personal touch of just being like, yeah, this one person should do this all. This is mental, guys. Look at you all. This is mental. This is great. This feels like Heart of Thorns release. Am I dropping frames? Oh, I am dropping a couple of frames. Why might that be happening? It could just be that I'm lagging then. It could just be a personal lag thing with me. Maybe I'll turn off some of my remoting software. And Steam, if Steam's doing it. Jesus Christ. Okay, these quag in here at this hot spring annoy the hell out of me, though. Yeah, quality stream capper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're dropping a couple. I might... Uh, we, we're dropping only about 5%. Uh, and I think it's only just started recently. So, if it continues, I will... Um, uh, I'll just drop the quality ever so slightly. And we're good. Alright, no, look. People are complaining now. So, maybe it suddenly got worse. Uh, let me just turn it down slightly. This keeps being an issue for me. I wonder if this is my uh, router being a pain in the ass. I don't know whether it's my ISP. Alright, so yeah, we'll do the savoury herbs again. Or savoury herbs, as the Americans would say. <laughs> do you guys like that? That make you cringe? You enjoy that? I hope so. The cycle time here is ludicrously fast. Do you mean for the event? Well, I was actually praising that yesterday. I think that's awesome. I think it's really good because it means that a lot of people get to actually experience... The, um, uh, the, the, the multiple states of the, 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 what, what's cool about dynamic events really is that you, you sometimes get to affect places and if you lose a bit of permanence because it cycles very quickly, then that's fine, right? Like I, I, I quite enjoy that. I think that's a good thing to do. So you go, I got 21, 24 herbs already. I think you only need 21 to finish. You think it's a problem with Twitch and OBS? It's been happening to you quite frequently. Yeah, I don't know though. Maybe it's just you and I have got an issue with our internet. Yeah, it's a router, guys. A router. That's what we call it here. Okay, so you're gonna get. Already be dead if you were evil. So who? All right. So you're gonna get a firestone from the Gruel. You're gonna get um. What else did we get? You're going to get Suet from the Sons of Svanir. Okay. And then lastly, from um, this person, we're going to buy some berries as well. You're going to buy... Uh... Oh, can I not get it? Well, is... this isn't right. What have I messed up? Oh, no. And then you're going to get eggs. So you're going to get egg, Suet, and then you're going to get a Firestone. And you're going to take them. The Quaggan doesn't actually sell you anything. In the story, I quite like it. The Quaggan refuses to help you. They do a little bit in the story here where they actually ask you to go it alone and figure out what you want to do. 
uh, instead of just holding your hand the whole way. I was actually sickened on release day of the amount of players who were like, I don't know where to go or what to do. Please, somebody help me. I don't know where to go. It's like, what you, you really, you're that scared to explore. This is what you did. You walked here. You walked around this little place and you're so terrified to explore or, or screw your own head on your shoulders and think about somewhere to go. Like, I don't know, five minutes off to the side. You're now asking a match hat for help on how to, where to finish the, the elixir. Here you go. I've got everything I need. Time to make an elixir. You're going to boil yourself in here with the heat. And you're going to make an elixir. All right. So this is a really interesting thing that I think they should be using uh, at the guild hall with the guild hall buffs. So the guild hall gives you 24 hours of a certain buff, but it's so it, it's play time, not not real world time, not server time. And so the result of that is you very rarely go to the tavern, and the t guild hall is less used than it could be. However, this new buff they've got here is pretty cool in that it gives you uh, this thing here, cold resistance. But you'll notice it only has two hours fifty six minutes left on me. That's because reset comes in two hours fifty six minutes, and so after reset we do it again, and we'd get like twenty four hours left on it. And I quite like that. I like that idea. It means that every day you run around the map, you do the hearts, and then you get your cold resistance. So they've made the elixir creation a daily, by the way. But the daily will only give you two fresh winter berries while it costs like four to make the elixir. So you're always losing out. So that's a little bit weird uh, that they've made it a daily. Um... Now, as I said, I totally was under the impression that there were good rewards and things. In So, so th this cold resistance allows us to access an area we would otherwise die in almost instantly. Um, and I totally thought there was going to be good farm here. There was going to be, like, epic things to find. And that that, that was going to be a key part of the map. It turns out it's not. And I don't know... I don't know what, what all that was about. Like, it, it just seems really weird that they were very cagey about the bit of cold. They were very specific that they didn't want much information about the bit of cold going up like super quick after the patch came out. They, they, they were very, it seemed like there was going to be something more to it. And then there just wasn't. And it, I think that's a shame. I think the bit of cold should have something. At least one thing you can get every day. One, it, I, maybe just, just something as simple as an achievement that's like, hey, you need 30 of these things. Get it from the bit of cold. One per day or something. I don't, I don't know. So at least people are spending a bit of time going in and out of there. Oh, it costs 10. It costs 10 berries to do it. There you go. So you seriously lose out. I mean, you can buy five from the hot springs right there. And then there's these other ones that you can gather right nearby. But, I mean, you may as well hold on to them if you really want them. So the bitter cold. This leads into the bitter cold. Uh, there is another inch of the bitter cold too. If you guys haven't seen this, it's awesome. Uh, it's very cool. And I'm actually going to start doing the cats soon as well. I sort of did one of the cats here. If you grab... Um, a flame from this. Hopefully we can. Or is the fact that... Alright, we're going to do this whole event. So let's do this whole event. Somebody, someone asked me a question and we'll just chit chat while we do this event. Somebody asked me what my open world build is. It's not really designed for open world or anything. It's just my Apothecary's Fractal Healer. Uh, on Monk Runes instead of Radiance Runes. Radiance Runes I think are very good. But when I first started doing Nightmare Fractal. I felt like I, I, I wanted Monk more. Life is a trial. Call to the judge and call to the jury. The only, uh, I only wish there was more of a reason to go to the bit of cold. The daily, as I see it, just makes the elixir cheaper. It would have been annoying to completely negate the price. Right. Oh, you're, you're, you're right, actually. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think it's weird they put it as a daily. Not, not necessarily that the daily is not rewarding enough. I just think it's a weird daily. Um... If you guys want invites to the guild, we had, like, an unbelievable amount of people requesting invites yesterday. And so we're like capped hard and I'm really scared about people donating and then missing it. So I probably won't take any today guys. Tomorrow my mail cap goes through and then if you ask me tomorrow you should be able to get an invite. Uh, for what it's worth by the way, somebody joined the guild who's been offline for six months. Don't know how you manage that. But seriously, offline for six months. I'm a little bit scared because I think what's happened is the person's been playing with a peer offline on them. And maybe they don't realise that they've been doing that. Or maybe they do, and they're doing it for fun. But if you... I think you're, you're, the name was... Uh, what was their name? It was like Savage or something. It was something like that. Alright? If you're that guy, 
if you joined the guild yesterday, if you're one of those people, just check, right? You might have been appearing offline for ages. If you've been wondering why you're getting kicked from all your guilds and nobody responds to you and all that kind of stuff, it could be because you've been appearing offline and you forgot that, you know, status is, online status was the thing in, in, in Guild Wars 2. So, yeah. All right, so anyway, grab this torch and then you come up here. And this is a way to rock it into the bit of cold. You, you, you will get a point of interest up here or something or a mastery point and you can sort of force your way to get it. Uh, without the elixir, but we've got the elixir, so we'll survive just fine. But you want to walk up onto this, and you notice there's some ledges up here. And here you'll notice that there is this beautiful effect. There's a thermal tube sticking out the side of the cliff. Which means if you can get into the entrance of that, it's going to launch you... Ooh, over there. Ah. And you get a big sign that says, warning, use thermal tube at own risk. And we get a thermal tube here. So let's jump in. Woohoo! And we go straight away. And we're in the bit of cold. We're deep in the bit of cold as well. Um, so the cool thing that goes on here is you can actually get a, a cap for your home instance uh, by coming over to some of these thro frozen snow leopards and thawing them out. And the first one you get will, will like start following you and will say, oh, this thing really likes you. And then it will come to greet you every day in your home instance. However, if you've already got the cat, um, you'll kill the new ones that you thought. <laughs> so, just a word of warning about that. After you've done the cat and you've got the mastery point, there's really no reason to come to this little area. Um, unless you just want to shortcut into the bit of cold, I guess. Uh, but you got some more calcum, I suppose. Berries have another problem that you always get berries where wood or it's not 100%. Yeah, I know. It seems like it's bugged to me. It really does. It's just crazy. It's ludicrous. There shouldn't be Dragonite on it. There shouldn't be magic on it. That you shouldn't get that many berries from it. I'm sorry, guys. I know it's epic, crazy farm. But it's just undermining so much. It's just mental. I mean, I'm often on my high horse about stuff like this. But I really don't think you can argue with it. it basically, I, 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 it sort of twigged on me yesterday. So this person never had cold resistance. It sort of twigged on me yesterday what, what the devs are kind of doing with all this. What they're basically saying is... We care more about you being in the new map than we care about guild missions and that we care about commendations and that we care about world bosses and that we care about all this other stuff we've done in the past. That's basically what the d developers are saying. We care more about this than that. And so we're happy to bloat the rewards and move you away. We can't raise them. I'm sorry. It's too cold. We can't survive. Uh... And I'm not really passing... Well, I sort of am passing judgment on that. I think that's a silly thing to say. I think that's a silly thing to... Conclusion to come to about what's important about the game and the longevity of the game. But maybe that's just me. Maybe it's more important than anything else that everyone's together on the new map and it feels like there's a lot of people here. But you play the rewards too heavily and there's not going to be enough. Anyway, so uh, the story asks you to melt that waterfall there. And you can go through. And this is the bit of cold. Um... For what it's worth, I think this place is beautiful. I, I really do. I think it's stunning. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's one of the prettiest snowy areas that they've ever made. Especially with post-processing on. Oh my god, I really need to shrink that down, don't I? The uh, the, the things of people subbing. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Spud Club. But I need to I need to shrink the size of the pop-ups. That's huge. I've only just realised. There we go. Let's, let's shrink that down a bit. Uh, th this place is beautiful. It really, really, really is. My only thing with it, I mean, there's always something to complain about, right? Always got to be nitpicking. Always, always, always. That's basically what I do. I don't give good feedback. I give nitpicks. That's me. But, uh, it's so Arctic. We're not in the Arctic. We're not even as far north as the start of Eye of the North. Eye of the North started, like, here in Guild Wars 1, okay? Like, somewhere around here. This was Boreal Station, all right? And then you walked up to the Eye of the North. And then you had all the maps were up here. This was the far Shiver Peaks. We are barely north of, like, Yak's Bend right now. We're not that far north. I know that Jormag's been doing stuff, and I know that his storms have struck the areas, and everybody's had to flee south and stuff. But come on, this is mental. This is freezing. This doesn't leave them much space. Now, right, they've gone Arctic already. They've gone, they've gone full, you know, they've gone the whole, they've gone the whole length, right? And so now it's going to feel really weird if up here there's like a nice, you know, more like Lornar's Pass style area. It's magic. It's the bit of cold. But the story doesn't go any lengths to explain why. The I mean, look at the Eye of the North. The Eye of the North isn't as cold as this. I suppose we're sort of inside a building. 
And then think about this. Think about the world map, right? Think about the, the, like, the Order of Whispers globe map. Think about how far north that goes and where those freezing cold areas are. Uh, are. That's the Arctic. They, they, they like went deep on this one. Next map, we're going to need those torches just to get through the map and not freeze to death. I mean, how do you power creep on this in terms of making something seem frostier and colder and stuff? I'm scared they've blown their load a bit too quick. But we'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, so yeah, the bit of cold's like, there's, there's deadly enemies. I've heard some people really, really complaining about it. Saying, oh, it's just full of horrendous enemies. I'm never going back there. It's the worst thing in the world. Ah... Uh... Is that really the worst thing in the world? I, I, I don't know. I haven't really struggled here too much, but I, I've been playing a very tanky sort of open world build lately. Uh, but there is nothing to do except gather magic. And here's the thing. Do you want to run around doing this just for a shot at like four unbound magic? Or do you want to harvest a single berry and get like 15? Right? And you can harvest like 60 a day. Like people just aren't going to be coming here. And uh, I think that's a bit of a shame. I was going to do a video just talking about my updated opinions on the map and stuff. But I guess uh, it will just be on the streams now instead. That's why I was hesitant to come here yesterday. You think of this as being really high elevation and that helps? Yeah, that's a good point. Like, I honestly thought we'd find, you know, this being a little farm spot. I really did. For something or other. People complaining about enemies. Oh, I've seen the, the most humble bragging I've ever seen in Guild Wars 2 with this patch. This has been a great patch. I've loved this patch. This has been my favorite patch of Season 3. This has been an awesome patch. But that Nightmare Fractal, okay, which I love, has really brought out... If, if you want to know who the, who the kids are in your community, if you want to know who the insecure little boys are, if you want to know who, you know, the young ones are or whatever, right... The Nightmare Fractal has, has shown that. There has been so much humble bragging. It's been unbelievable. Oh, I don't know why people say it's hard. I found it so easy. Somebody thanked me. Somebody say I'm good at the game. It's everywhere. Oh, my God. It's brilliant. Uh, I've definitely started to find, though. I mean, I mean I'll, I'll get on board with it as well. I'll be one of them. Uh, I've definitely started to find. I, I've done it, like, every day since it's come out now. And I, we're getting to grips with it now. We, you know, it's pretty comfy. You know, you don't wipe too much. We wiped yesterday on... Oh, no. We almost wiped on Slacks, the second boss. Like, we had to revive orb. One of us had to revive orb to get through it. But I still think for progression, for first time through, it's it's excellent stuff. Someone say I'm good at the game. Crying, crying, crying. I know. I know. I, I'm, I'm such a dick. Because I really shouldn't have that opinion about, uh, about when I see that. But it's, it's everywhere. Go look at my YouTube comments. Go look at whatever I've talked about on the stream. Go look, if you keep a close eye on the Discord as well, the Guild Discord or Guild Chat that we've got. Uh, I get whispers about it. It's brilliant. So, guys, how do we... How do we melt the ice here for this diving goggle thing? And why are there three diving goggles here when only one gives you the achievement? How does that work? Because I've done it, but I only... I, I just sort of got lucky because it had already been done. Why does it look like he's streaming a cam point of the mono? Because I've got PCs all around me. So, that's kind of what's going on there. Is this EU or NA? It says in the title, my friend. When will we get the video about you talking about the story? I really want to hear your thoughts about the passive-aggressive Bram. Alright, listen. I'm going to do a video about the story. Like a recap. Alright, so we're all on the same page. Um, and people who aren't actively playing the game have some idea of what's going on and maybe are thinking about calming themselves. So, like, you've got these diving goggles here, right? And that, that you can melt the ice down there. I don't know how to, though. I don't know how that does. Um, and then after that, I'm probably going to have a separate video on Brown because I've got about two pages worth of script written out just on my thoughts about the Brown thing and all the different facets and all, all, all the sides to it. On where we can stand with that. There we go. Well, I buggered that up. One has to fall from the top goggle to break the ice, but they die in the process. Really? Is that actually somebody has to suicide? Or are you just, is this a, is this a trick? Ready to rock. That's what you call passive aggressive. Yeah, it wasn't exactly Ready passive, was it? I, I got to I got to agree with Restus there. That wasn't passive aggressive. You need it now, WP. 
Please do a recap. I didn't play since the release of Heart of Thorns, so I'm confused. Well, have you been following my other recaps? I mean, I think I did a pretty good job summing up what happened in Rising Flames and in uh, Out of the Shadows. There's only been three big story patches. I mean, I say that like... Uh... Well, no, it is it is pretty much a shame. That... Oh, here we go. We'll watch, we'll watch, we'll watch. Did it work? Oh, it did work. Look, that was not a troll. Wow, that's how it's done. Pick up the diving goggles when you go in here if you want, guys. Oh, no, I missed. <laughs> I missed. Crap. I don't have a strong British accent. What? My, my British accent has, has been getting lost. Because of crack in the ice. This is the crack in the ice, guys. Alright? Everyone's saying it's something else. Alright? It's not anything else. It's this. By the way, whether you got the achievement or not, there's a chest here and you can get some berries. Every day. But, I mean, is it worth coming here every day? I mean, what I think should happen... What I think they could have done, alright... Is, you know the meta with defeating the nine champions? I think that by defeating the nine champions, you should cause them, okay, once they've been defeated in the storm, it should be a bit like the silver waste, where you go, where the map like phases into something else, okay? And so basically what happens is you kill, for every champion that dies, you, uh, the only champions that spawn will be the ones at Brazier's that were lit straight away. So that's some, so that encourages people to keep them lit, right? But for everyone that you defeat during the storm, they, they actually flee. And, it, and the meta says, oh, the champions have receded to the bitter cold. And now what you find is nine champions tightly packed up here after the storm has gone out. So then you can chase them into the bitter cold, kill the champions up here. And when you kill a champion up here, it's got like a big reward, like a big chest or something. Okay. And so then you get like a proper idea of defend it at night where everyone's spread out. And then there's like a mini champ train style thing where everybody goes into the bitter cold to get extra reward at the end. And then that, that means everybody wants to get their potion every day. So everybody wants to do the hearts every day and everybody wants to do the meta every day. So that, you know, like that works. I mean, shit, give him a hero's choice chest. Are we just forgetting about those? Do those not deserve to be on the new maps? Be something like that. And that's how I would have done it. And that's what I thought they were going to do. And shit, then have a Chlora Jormag spawn or something after that's done. But as it stands, my friends, the bit of cold really isn't worth very much, unfortunately. You're going to do the story. I think the main reason they were cagey about it is because there's a single location in that cave behind that waterfall. That is vaguely spoilery, but I mean, it's so vaguely spoilery. I got news for you, Arena. That there is no player who cares that much about the story that they're that, that that's gonna you know ruin their experience from what what you could visually see in that cave without doing the story. All right, it just was not a big deal. Are the Drakes that don't attack you really asleep? Yeah, the Drakes are awesome. They're like just lounging around, but near the near the cracks in the ice too. Maybe they should have called it Cracks in the Ice, because there's so many of them. Just put level 80 Mordrum in all starting areas. Only people who can dodge 90% can continue H HXH style. So somebody tell me what Tao How is, or Tu Who, or however you say it. T-H-O-U, T-H-O-U, or whatever it is. What, what is that? Because that's what people keep referring to with, with the fractal. Uh, WP, you think Guild Wars 2 is still growing number... Player base wise and why? Well, I'd like to say they are. Uh, my viewership's certainly gone up. Um, let, 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 me, let me put it this way. Um, I had a very small channel during Guild Wars 1 days that nonetheless grew. Okay. I had a very small channel, but it grew and it grew. Uh, then I had an enormous channel at the release of Heart of Thorns. Uh, sorry, at the release of the core game. Jesus, I'm so used to saying the release of Heart of Thorns. Uh, at the release of the core game, I had an enormous channel. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of viewership. There was crazy hype over it. Mainstream gaming media media hype, right? Within two months of, of the release of Guild Wars 2, that had all dropped away. Like, huge amounts of it had dropped away. It had dropped away to the point that I was getting twenty to 30,000 views a video. And then I was getting two to 3,000 views a video. Seriously. It dropped off that much after two to three months. Why? Because they botched leveling. Why? Because they botched the personal story. Why? Because they didn't feed people into endgame. Why? Because 
one of the only goals you could do with legendary uh, weapons. Why? Because PvP was still basically in beta. About world versus world, I would say, was the only thing that, for the, for the time frame, was sort of anywhere near where it probably should have been. Why? Because dungeons were far too exploitable, blah, 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 right? Whatever the reasons are. Uh, and then, for like... Yeah, and then it spiked up a bit at the start of Living World Season 1, but then they weren't delivering content during Living World Season 1 very well whatsoever. Anybody who tells you those were great days has nostalgia goggles on. And so I was sort of bubbling around as like, you know, a 5 to 10k an episode viewership guy. Um, uh, then Heart of Thorn, th then Season 2 came out and it sort of stayed the same but grew a little bit. But what, after the Heart of Thorns announcement, suddenly things started getting kicked back up. Um, I, I, and I, we never got as big as at launch, I would say, in terms of like the amount of people focused on the franchise. But we got very big, okay? And so I grew a lot for Heart of Thorns. All those months of anticipation of Heart of Thorns. And for a couple of months as well, probably more months than Cortiria managed to sustain a player base. Uh, it was doing pretty well as well. So the player base for the game was really on the ups around that time. Just because of anticipation of the expansion and then the expansion itself. Unfortunately, then we hit a big content drought. But even during the content drought, I would say from what I can see, the Guild Wars 2 player base was still bigger than the content drought. Well, not even content drought, but uh, since after release and the controversies of Ascended gear coming into the game and all that shit, right? I would still say that the post Heart of Thorns con content drought Probably was we, we were a bit more populated Or we didn't lose as much do you get what I mean? Since that content droughts ended I've seen big growth big growth lots and lots and lots and I think the game's well on the up But I you know, so I say that but I could be wrong that could just be I'm a better youtuber I you know, it could just be a YouTube specific thing. There are more users on YouTube It's not necessarily there are more users on Guild Wars. It could be because I've got just more years of backlog of subscriber build up on YouTube, these have all accounted for my growth in recent months instead of Guild Wars 2 actually being that much bigger of a game. These could all be things. And the other thing you got to think about is they did reveal that at least what they're earning from the game isn't particularly high at the moment. But then maybe that's not a, a good measure of player population either. Maybe that's a measure of um, uh, just global microtransaction trends. Or maybe it's just the way that their microtransactions are being done and... Maybe it's that they're not doing enough to advertise in-game instruments and all the various things people can buy and mail carriers and the uh, luster of gliders have worn, has worn off and so forth. So, you know, there's a lot of things at play. I really can't say. Did you notice the change they made to the world map with the raids? The water pattern now fits on the world map. I did see that. Yes, I did, actually. I did. So this here... They actually, I think this they drew in. This before wasn't here. And so this stupid coastline was just out in the middle of water before. And they've now changed the map art a little bit. And uh, and that, that did not go over my head. I do appreciate that. But you see these ponds here, right? The original outline of the, the thing, I think, was like that. Okay? This, is, this was all awful. They've still basically retconned things. But at least the art line's up a bit better now. So, yeah. All right, well, let's do one wave of John Mike's Fury, and then we'll have a look at maybe getting Ad Infinitum, yeah? Or at least finishing that, well, working on that collection. I won't be able to finish it because I don't have the pristines, because I was working on... Oh, yeah, I never showed you on my last stream, guys. Check it out. The Omni Potion. Oh, yeah, it's ascended. So you double-click it, and it gives you all the fractal buffs, max duration, max stacks. Infinite uses. Ah, I was so happy when this popped out and it was ascended. It costs a lot, though. This costs 2,500 fractal relics, just for an Omni Potion. Do you think the gliding could be much more than it is? The 5 skill and Bloodstone Fen comes to mind? Um, yeah, I, I do think that they could do some interesting things with gliding. It's just a matter of... Well, I, I think their best space for it now is in Living World Personal Story. Um, what I what I think they should do is uh, let, let's let's take it back to the end of the regular Personal Story and the airship scene. Yeah, um, think about how amazing that kind of instance and that kind of experience would be with gliding. You don't just wait for the two. You know that that awesome moment where the glory of Tyria swings up and you jump from one ship to airship to the other. 
right? Or when the helicopters are moving around and stuff. Instead of these being very structured, rigid little moments like that, guess what? With gliding, you're actually gliding around. So I'm not saying, oh, go back and remake that. Of course, I'd like that, but that, that's not what I mean right now, right now. I just mean we could have an instance in that same kind of style, in the air, in a large area. Like, um... Like, if they remade Living World Season 1, and it was for only for Heart of Thorns people and beyond, uh, Living World Season 1 should open, in my opinion, with content we never got to experience the first time around, and that is us on the airship, maybe playing the role of um, some of the Zephyrites, uh, on the Zephyrite fleet. I think that when they retell Season 1... Sorry, it should end with that, not start with that. When they retell Season 1... It should end with us at the Labyrinthine Cliffs, okay? Like, after Scarlet's done, after we have the Mitrin Bar stuff, we should have the Zephyrites visit. We should go interact with them and just board their airships. And we're there as they got shot down over, over Dry Top. And we get to experience it ourselves. And we get to glide, right? Glide around the fleets. But also, so I think that, you know, a new patch... Um, in Living World Season 3 has space for that too, where they can have a cool gliding based instance where you get the Bloodstone Fen style skills back. I do think the Bloodstone Fen skills are far too power creeped to be to be worth anything for the real game. I, I, I think it's a really crazy idea to ask for that everywhere interior. That's nonsense. But yeah, that sort of thing would be amazing, wouldn't it? Think about that. That would be so cool. That would really push gliding to a cool place. And then the other thing you could do with it as well is... Um, that I've sort of always regretted isn't there. If you go back and watch the guild trailers. Now, I, I was watching those because of my guild hall based systems and review that I did. Which is like, an, in total, it's about an hour and 40 minutes long. Just talking about guild stuff that came with Heart of Thorns, right? We'll see how many people are actually interested and listen to me ramble that long. But um, one of the things in the trailer for that, okay, is you'll see a, a player in the Lost Precipice... Dive, you know, you know the Lost Precipice, the top right area, that further exploration section, you know, you know up here. There's a trailer clip where a guy jumps off of this and he jumps down, right? So he's high up and he jumps down the cliff and the way he does it is he like does a dive bomb. He's gliding, but he's like dive bombing. He's angled fully down and he is, he's zooming really fast. And it's actually like a gliding maneuver that never seems to get end up in Heart of Thorns at all in the end. You can't do that. You can't look down and gain a big speed boost and like angle down like that. And that, that's like a more general, when we're talking about like a more general change that they could make to gliding that makes it a bit more interesting without going into the crazy power creep Bloodstone Fen style experience. Um, I think, I think it would be nice to see that at some point, like hold a bind to, to dive bomb or something. This map fills your inventory so fast, it's mental. I think that would be really cool. Maybe you guys forgot about that as well. Uh, what's going on here? I need to accept that. Then I can accept that. Then I can come here. Then I can salvage all. Wow, we got some uh, pieces of amber. Right? Oh, that must have been from my uh, home instance earlier, surely. All right, here we go. So his, his champions are up. So I guess we'll just fight the champions. If we all stay together, we should get as many cha as many champions as possible. Someone's already killed one. I guess there's no way that we can own a whole map for ourselves. Armor Imagine if we still didn't have auto salvage. I know, right? Salvage all has been huge. And you can tell that it's liberated the devs too with, with just spamming up items in our inventories. Salvage all is huge. What a great, great, great update. I mean, and such a simple thing in the end as well. To, to, on the on the on the players' side, I'm not saying it was simple for them to implement because they clearly had to put a lot of thought into the kind of things that would get affected by. Damn it, we got frozen. What do you think about raid guild mission dailies, which unlock when you have done them for that week? I don't care about raid dailies. I don't think that 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 that's important. I think the weekly system for raids has worked out really well for Guild Wars 2. Come on, don't lag me out in the middle of this. Oh my god. Oh my god. We were getting 5k burn ticks there and I was lagging out and I'm on a healer. That was kind of cool. Um, but guild missions? Dude, you better believe it. I want more. I want more puzzles. I want more challenges. I want more of that stuff. That stuff's awesome. I, I really, really like the puzzles. The puzzles... If you ever want to feel inspired about how much better the personal story could be in Corteria, if they'd made real instances dedicated for, re for specific stories, just look at the, pu the puzzles. Playing with the audio on... I'm a broken record, I'm well aware. But it's, they're great. They're so good. Um, but yeah, like a gliding-based mission maybe or something. 
I remember uh, the suggestion that with Heart of Thorns, because of gliding, we might get guild missions that were gliding. And it never ended up being a thing. You know, races, guild races, never ended up being a thing. If an expansion is a time to expand upon established frameworks and systems in the game, Heart of Thorns should have really expanded upon guild, guild missions, shouldn't it? <laughs> but it did it in the end. Uh, so somebody said, hi, how are you? I'm going to ask him if they're watching the stream because there's no point in me responding otherwise. Every time you notice that you're lagging out, the stream video drops to 1 FPS for the moment. Yeah, that means it's on my end. It, it means it's not the servers. It's me, guys. I'm the lagger. I don't know how. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. It's probably just my routers being a bitch. It was fine earlier. It was absolutely fine. Uh, what do you think about a daily heart in each of the capitals with a once daily item for cultural decorations in the guild hall? Yeah, uh No, I'd say what I'd say make it weekly make it weekly if it's daily. It's a bit too easy You might actually encourage guilds to meet up and do stuff together But if it's weekly, I I, I, I could get on board with that And the reason I say that is because if, if it's daily and you get one decoration per day unless it's like a pumpkin or a fragment of the solid ocean or a pristine snowflake in that you build all the other decorations out of it. Unless it's like that, it's not going to be enough. I'm sorry about this lag, guys. I don't know what to say. Don't worry about it. Internet's a bitch sometimes. The internet certainly is. Oh, somebody else says they're disconnecting constantly. I was lagging really badly earlier in game. I was interested in the AMA. There were a lot. I so I did that video on the AMA. There were a lot of comments I got. I I didn't bother talking about. As ever, there's always the one kid who's like, "Can I get tech support, please?" It's like, come on, this isn't. You're not gonna waste an AMA on tech support for developers, are you? But no, they do. Anyway, so someone was asking about like their lag issues. And they were actually angry about it. And they were like, oh, I'm, this is so bad. I can't play the game, blah, 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 blah. And they kind of said, sorry, we were getting DDoS last week, but we can't help that. And they were like, oh, it's still happening to me. And they're like, eh, it's probably more on your end. I mean, I, I don't know how much ego you have to have to think, oh, I'm the only one still talking about disconnecting constantly. There's clearly thousands of people playing the game. And yeah, I'm going to blame them and their servers. <laughs> Instead of you know, maybe think the problem might be with number one, you know, might might might, might be me. It's crazy uh, So where's another champion I kind of just want to go for champions So the next one's over here If we can get to it uh, Speaking a lot about gliding would you prefer a map entirely underwater or entirely in the air? Oh, I don't know man Um they both sound really cool to me. They actually do both sound really cool. Like, I think I think some people would be really surprised just how tall ArenaNet can make these maps. How high they can make them. Like, you might look at those trees and think, ah, yeah, it's not playable space up there. They couldn't actually make it playable space with how high those trees are. They fucking could. They could. All they'd have to do is, is add enough jump, mu jump mushrooms and fungal platforms to take you all the way up. They could make it. They, they could make gameplay up there. The engine is actually quite capable of having an incredible... The, the problem comes with navigation in terms of the minimap, I think. Which is why they sort of hold back a little bit. But if you... Again, like it's a great point you're making there. Because if you think again about the Ara story instance... Ah, uh, that's that's uh, some some really really high gameplay there. Uh, imagine a map like that just filled with water, or like a Spyro the Dragon style. Or I always think of Azuric with the air power, the air realm when you're at the top of the tree style thing, with just like lots of little floating platforms. I think that'd be more appropriate for the mists, the sky one maybe. If ArenaNet completely revamped underwater in general, but it cost the next expansion to be delayed for a few months, would you agree this is worth it? Ah, that's a hard question to ask me because... Um, I'm, I'm sort of not your average guy. I, I, I Maybe I'm, this is wrong of me. Maybe I'm a bit... Maybe this is my own ego here. Uh, I, I sort of feel like I'm a bit, I'm a bit more patient than most people. Uh, you know, we, we've talked about on the stream before. I've asked you guys to vote. Let's do it again, all right? 
Let, let's get all of you, all right? So, uh, what was the question we asked before? Oh, okay. Well, it was something like this, all right? What excites you more, okay? Uh, that the next expansion could be in 12 months or that the next expansion could be in two to three years. What excites you more? Okay, type a one if the idea that it's coming out in a year excites you more. Type a two if the idea that it comes out in two to three years excites you more. So one if it's in the short term, two if it's in the long term. So type that, one or two. See, for me, unquestionably, my answer to that is two. Without a shadow of a doubt. I want them to have as much time as possible to make it this fucking epic, feature-packed thing. Sorry, content-packed thing. Expand on all the stuff. For me, it's two. Every time. Two, 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 two. Give them another two years. Make it awesome. Have tons of maps. Blow people away with it. Give them incredible value for money. Put the franchise on the map. Alright? Living World can sustain me for two more years. I could do that. So, you know, you ask me... You ask me, uh, you know, a, a delay of, of, of a couple of months. What does that mean? What, two to three months? To, yeah, I'd wait that. I'd wait that for a lot of things, though. It depends how long it's already been in development. It depends how quickly the, the community is shrinking. It depends how substantive those changes are going to be. It's sort of not a question that I can comfortably answer in a vacuum, you know? Well, there you go. That's the storm done. No, 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 you only care about elite specialization, so one year. And that's fair enough, too. If you're like a PvPer. But then, uh, I don't know. The, the seasons, if they get good enough, could sustain people. Would you rather have one or two expansions in the next three years? Depends on the size of the next expansions. To me. I don't... Listen, here's the thing. The more expansions that come out, the older the game looks to potential randoms and new people. And, uh... And the more scared they're going to be to get into it, the more... Uh, it depends on Arena, it's business model. If they're smart, they'll roll previous expansions in for free. So people aren't, you know, super segregated off and stuff. But, um... You know, I like that I can say to people right now, Oh, Guild Wars 2 is only just in its first expansion. It's not even got that much going on at the moment. And you get everything for free. You, you only have to buy the one pro product. I like that. Um... I would be scared about shitting out tons of expansions very frequently. You know, it will sting people's wallets, first of all. But then also it changes the more global perception about what the game is. If in two years I can still just say, oh, Guild Wars 2 is under its first expansion, I feel like that makes the game feel more youthful than it is, right? If, if in two years I'm saying that, we're actually, you know, it's a fairly old game at that point, but... I agree the expansion should be epic, but I think two years from now is too much for some players and Living World won't hold them over. Yeah, I, you, you, you guys are right. I, I, I'd probably go more like a year and a half from now. Let, let's, let's say they're going to go for another summer release. I don't think it should be the summer coming up. I think it should be the summer after that. That's what I think. But we've got, uh, there's every bit of chance that they might announce the next expansion on, uh, you know, PAX South again or something in just a couple of months. I've seen some people saying that. Nick, I just, I just feel like that's going to be too soon. I feel like that's going to be too soon. These pack, this is great. Right, but l listen, if they do a, if they do an expansion announcement at PAX South this year, like, you know, February, is that? Or next year? You, you go, know I mean, in February, just a couple of months away. If they do one just a couple of months away to announce some kind of uh, 2017 winter or 2017 summer release, I think it's still a little bit too... As great as this patch has been, I think it's a little bit too close to the most recent content drought. I, I, and I still feel like people will be like, well, where's all the rest of the legendaries? Well, where's all more maps? G great, you've added a couple, but still, Heart of Thorns in total is still only seven maps. You know, they'll take the, the, the lowest number they can, which is probably a little bit unfair. But, you know, like... There's still only one raid. Where's my legendary armor? And now you're announcing another expansion. Like I just sort of, I, I, I don't, I, I don't feel like that's a safe bet. So I think best, I think the safe bet is this. Announce the next expansion next summer. Summer 2017, announce the expansion. Uh, and when you announce that expansion, have nearly all the new set of legendaries out and have legendary armor out before you do it. And two or three more new maps beyond this. If they can do patches like this up to that time, the community will be in a great place, I think. 
we'll be we'll be sorted. We'll be laughing. And I think when they announce the expansion, it should be pegged for one year away from the announcement. One year. Not not like the six months or whatever the balls. One year. Yeah, finish Heart of Thorns first. I know it's a bit of a joke, but it's it's sort of serious at the same time. Oh, I need a... Has anyone got a torch? Good, cool. In my opinion, I think an expansion should be made when it, every one and a half to two years. I would be so excited if the next one is in one year, but it takes longer than I, than that. I would start to doubt the dev team due to market changes and outdated mechanics graphics. I greet you like the sun on this morning. I greet you. How much can we just scale one of these up? Can this just casually spawn champions? Just a regular little... You can't live on a hype train? You don't have to live on a hype train. You don't have to... It, just announce the existence of it. Right? And a trailer. That's it. I mean, we all know that it exists right now. They talk openly about the fact that there is an expansion. There have been leaks. Blah, blah, blah. But uh, an official announcement with a sweet little trailer. Contract someone out to do a real CGI one as well. Please. Please. Come on. Come on. That'd be so good. Right? Just do that. And then leave it. Leave, leave the community in the dark for like six months. Then do a six-month cycle of hype training to the release. That's what I think would be best. I know some of you feel like the Heart of Thorns hype train was dragged out too long. Um, and you like the way sort of, you know, like Bethesda will release very quickly after an announcement and stuff like that. I think that for an MMO, which needs a sustained population over a long period of time uh, and needs to cling on to its content creator. I mean, I'm very biased on this because I'm a content creator. That release, the way that they handled the, the pre-release for Heart of Thorns was epic for me. It was amazing. Every week, week in, week out, I had tons of different things to talk about. Loads of quality, long, good discussion videos. M multiple videos about each elite specialization. Then we'd move on to the next feature. Then we'd move on to the next thing. And that was some hard work, keeping up with all of that. That really was. There was a lot to do. But, you know, my, my channel grew for it. And I got to sustain myself for it. And I'm not the only one. Other people will and can do that too. And so I, I personally think that, that that does a lot for all of us if we have, you know, a good six months of hype training. I think that that's good. And I get that that's my own bias. But you've got to understand, if I'm getting viewership and I'm getting lots of people watching and I'm getting... Uh, and other people like me are starting to sprout up on YouTube and, and on Twitch and there's there's a general hype. That pervades throughout the entire community, guys. That That retains lots of people. That brings every video I put up that does well is a chance for multiple more people to come back into the game to try Heart of Thorns out. That means better for you. That means more gem source sale. That means more developers. That, that means everything. You should never begrudge lots of people being around. That's one of the things that's always sort of ticked me off when it comes to world versus world and PvP as well. Like, you get some PvPers whining that the legendary backpacks exist. They'll be like... Oh, this ruined it because there's new people that aren't very good at PvP coming in for their backpack. It's like, fuck off. Are you, you... Oh, that annoys me so much. You need the population. PvP doesn't exist for you to wank off like some elite twat among 20 other people and that's it. Alright? It exists for people of all skill levels to get in there and have some fun. Having a population is an important thing. People will filter through to the high end. Are you really so dumb you can't see that? That winds me up so much. Hate seeing that. And World vs. Worlders get like it too. Oh, they put World vs. World achievements in, so people who are daring to try out my game type who don't know everything yet. Fuck you. Let your game type grow, you simple-minded plebeian. Okay, alright, I'm done. Really, really winds me up. I hate it when people say stuff like that. But that goes through the whole game, right? That goes everywhere. Alright, let's go to another... Make World vs. World the same as PvP. Question, why are you so sure we get new elite skills? In my opinion, I see that with expansion 2, but hopefully I'm wrong. Oh, you don't see it? No, well, because elite skills come packaged with elite specializations. So, uh, <laughs> sorry about the rant, guys. No one was even chat in chat saying that, alright? So that's why I'm comfortable <laughs> being angry about it. World versus Worlders have got a lot of love. They don't accept it. They can get all the hot stats and have a number of uh, hot professions coming in. Oh, proofs, sorry, coming in. Ooh, the controversial. I would never dare, ever, I would never dare go on a video 
and say half. Uh, I say world versus worlders are whining and that they've had enough love already. I would never dare do that. That's not what I'm saying. Let me just be clear. I would never do that. I don't play the game tough. I don't understand how hard it is on them. I have to assume that if a ton of people are whining that they're not getting the love they deserve, there might be some validity to that. All right. And I'll take it as, as red. I'll, I'm going to leave it there. You know, it's not my place to comment on absolutely everything. And fair play to them, you know? We're all seeking to have a better game for the kind of game we want to play. And that's fine. But what I can't abide is the way that world versus world, established world versus worlders muscle other people out. Tagless. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to talk about, I guess. Like, I get the incentives from people in the community to try and hide... But, you know, you're killing your game type. When you've got a huge zerg of people in there, when you're playing the game, when there's activity, but you're deliberately hiding and trying to make it look dead just so that you don't run the risk of people dragging you down because of the rally mechanics and all that stuff, right? These are all these are all serious things. Like, I, I really feel like one of the biggest problems with World vs. World, for a player like me, I mean, I've played this game for years. I know quite a lot about this game. I'm pretty comfortable with this game. I don't have the balls to go into World vs. World and just go flip camps and stuff anymore. I don't. Because I feel like I'm going to get whinged at by someone. I really do. <laughs> Thank you. 20 out of 10 would, rate, would rant again, says Joe. Thank you very much, Joe. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, what do I think of the actual story that's happened in the last three episodes? I honestly love season three, but it feels like every single episode has been an introduction to something. I actually don't feel like it's been an introduction to something, no. I feel like they've covered a lot of ground. A lot of ground. Oh, here we go. Bigger lag. Does this mean you guys can't even see me in a... Oh, there we go. All right, we're back. I feel like th they haven't really introduced anything. This patch, for example, didn't really introduce much. It just kicked some stories to actually be moving. You know, half the problem people have had with following Guild Wars 2 lore and stuff for years is um, that there are so many stories and places we could go and that were established and just it feels like we're going nowhere anywhere fast. I, I specifically remember one of my lines in my Heart of Thorns story review that I was just so disappointed in how slowly we were moving. You know? Um... Jaw, like Jawmag and Primordus, two active Elder Dragons right now. We already knew that, like, they're not new. They haven't introduced a new dragon to us. They haven't actually put more on their plate. They've started eating what's on their plate. That's what they've started doing, in my opinion. You know, like hanging threads like Cordicus, hanging threads like Lazarus, hanging threads like uh, what happened to the dwarves, I guess, to an extent. Uh, what happened to Ritlock in the Fire Island Chain? What happened to Ritlock in the Mists? These, these, these aren't new things that they've added. They're just... They, they, they took a real... It, to me, right, what it really feels like... I've got no idea if this is what it did, if this is what they did. But it really feels like after Heart of Thorns came out, a bunch of them sat down and they were like, all right, listen, guys, what are the important stories? We've got a lot of them. We need to tell them and we need to start telling them. What are they? And they were like, all right, look, we need Elder Dragons to be threatening. All right, look, people love the Massar and we've wanted to do something with them for ages. All right, we've wanted to see something with the White Mantle. We've wanted to tie up what was going on with Corticus. We've wanted, you know, like all these things. And they were like, all right, so there's this story, this story, this story, this story. What is the coolest thing we can do? Let's have two Elder Dragons fighting. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's give some real answers onto some of the, the, the deeper stories about dragons consuming one another's magic and stuff. And they had a big list and they're like, right, let's filter this out now. Let's spread it. Let's have some nice epic big moments at the start and let's go through it. And I really feel like that's what they did. I do not feel like for a second they went in a meeting and were like... Um, this is what I feel like they did in Living World Season 1, by contrast. I reckon the Season 1 meetings went like this. Oh, you're right, guys. Yeah, uh, we're sort of trying to do live updates. We don't know whether they'll be any good or what kind of story we can tell in them. So let's just sort of, uh, let's do some filler or something for a bit, you know, just to tide us over. Uh, what do we want to do? And everyone in that meeting was like, well, I don't know what the story of Guild Wars 2 is. Oh, well, I don't give a fuck about the story of Guild Wars 2. Oh, I played the personal story, but eh, it was all right. Or, oh, no, I've never played Guild Wars 1. Or, you know, like, like there's just very little enthusiasm or care. So they're like, I know, let's do something new. The Sylvaria are cool, right? And then Scarlet ends up being born. I reckon that the, that, that the Living World Season 1 meeting went something like that. And they added to the plate. 
Oh, so what can we do? Well, let's invent a new alliance. No, no, no. We don't have to look at the established law. Let's make the molten alliance. Oh, no, no, no. We don't have to look at established law. Let's make a new island in the middle of nowhere and put these giant crab things on it just because it was a random update. Because they didn't know, like, what they were capable of. Because they didn't... It's not just there was no enthusiasm, I don't think. But, you know, like... And it was only when we hit around Season 2 and Heart of Thorns that they were like, okay, we know what we can do now. Let's actually start telling the important stories. And I think a lot of them might have got more into it too. Saw so the, 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 the enthusiasm in the community to theorycraft, to speculate. What we all wanted, what they wanted. Well, we had to bring a sample of a new Jormag minion to Timey to check if the dragon's magic can negate each other. That didn't happen, so... For sure, we are going to visit Timey to give her a sample. Oh, you're talking about next patch? You know, I actually found it quite in quite interesting. Someone was talking to me on Reddit about... Um, or I was reading a conversation on Reddit. And uh, uh, it was a guy saying, basically... Jorm um, Morgamoth never showed any signs of having death magic. So these stories are stupid, basically. Is essentially what he was saying. Uh, which is bollocks. It is absolute bollocks. There, there's, there is clear sign. The blighting towers. The fact that, uh, and I, I, the, the second I read it, I was like, no. There, there were pretty clear references to Mordremoth doing stuff, not just like the pale tree, but also utilizing corpses. And in about two seconds on the wiki, uh, I found a quote straight away on that mission where Ritlock runs you as a prisoner, uh, where, where you go to try and save all the prisoners. It's just before Air dies. Um, and Ritlock kind of explains that Mordremoth's been gathering bodies and living things to take in and build his minions and so forth. I think there was precedent for, for Mordremoth using death and shadow magic. They're, but there's precedent, but their point was, in, in response, which I think is fairly valid, actually, that all the dragons really have been doing this. Like, Jormag kind of utilized dead bodies to make ice brood. To some extent or another, they all have. So, like, whether Timey's theory is 100% bang on or not, I guess remains to be seen. I think generally it will be true, though. What do you think of this episode's mastery and glacial gauntlets being locked behind at least 700 to... It's not locked behind all of that. What are you talking about? Fire Battler, what, what are you talking about? Fire Battler, can you, t can you do another at Wooden Potatoes? Can you tell me if you've complained about that on the forums? Just, just as a, an odd. It's not gated by that at all. Um... The gauntlets you can get without doing any of the collections that cost any money from just story stuff. And the mastery doesn't take very long to do at all anyway. And I don't see how the mastery is locked behind 600 to 700 gold worth of stuff. It's a bit of a, an, an, an odd one to me. I'm a bit curious about what you mean there. Um... Yeah, Coda's blessing, the stuff in the stuff. None of those are a part of the coordinate. Jormag used dead bodies. Well, uh, the specific quote that um, uh, the guy talked to me about was um, at the start of Edge of Destiny. And I do remember this. At the start of the Edge of Destiny book, uh, some Norn go off to fight the Ice Brood. And they, they talk about how they're coming back to assault Holbrack dead. Uh and I, I think he specifically meant... I don't remember... I haven't read that book for ages. But the idea is it's... Um, it, it, uh, a Norn comes back with his face like caved in. Like his face is smashed in or something. Uh, and I, I definitely... They def they've definitely talked about that. That people go... The Norn go out to fight Jormag. Uh, die to him. And then he become... And then they become the Ice Brood. The Ice Brood are, are, are dead. Definitely. So it's very Zaitani. And there's always been that kind of mix up. And that weird confusion. Those cross wires. At least with him. Uh, I don't really recall anything from um, Primordus doing that. Uh, I mean, again, I, I just think it might be that Jormag has got a bit of deathiness in him, even though Zaitan had the, the lion's share. I, I don't think it's, it's... It's not something the devs can't explain away. Timey's theory can still work. It's just, okay, at the launch of Guild Wars 2, Zaitan is active, Jormag is active. Jormag is primarily like icy magic and whatever. But he's also got a bit of death in there. I mean, Christ, he's really far up north. Who's to say he can't absorb magic of the death spectrum all that far, all that distance away from Zaitan? Who's to say he can't get a little bit? And he's got a bit of that in his corruption techniques. Uh, let's uh, free the Quaggan, I guess. We'll go into Fractals in a minute, guys. We'll go into Fractals. Because we are basically just zerging around the map here. Talking about crap. How long has the stream been going on for? 
One hour thirty. Okay. You see some potential in the fourth episode. Somebody mentioned that Cordicus is going. Yep, yep. There. We can check on Ritlock, Logan Zoja, and get what's going on. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how likely it is. What what I find quite curious is Logan's departure from the story. Because I never really got the impression that they had problems with, with getting his voice actor to do stuff. But maybe he's a bit too high profile. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, maybe they'll just want to bring him on for expansions. Maybe they'll just leave that hanging for ages. Could the Jade Moor be a minion of Steve? Potentially. Sure, why not? What do you think is likely for the next patch's map location? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? I'll have to have a bigger think about it. I think there's likely we'll go back to the Fire Island Chain or Lake Doric or um, north of Brisbane. One of those three, I think, are, are the top contenders on my list. But there's some other ones. Maybe there's a chance we'll go back to the Shivers. Maybe there's a chance we'll return to an existing map like Ember Bay. There, 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 are, there are chances for these things. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do here, okay, is I'm just going to take a look. Let, 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 let's, let's work on a legendary. Here we go. So I want this done, all right? So I need 30 pristines. I can get that in two days of doing all the recommended and T4s and the challenge, which is easy. Uh, I mean, the, the whole the whole group of everything. That's not a humble brag. That's not a humble brag. That's not what just happened there. Uh, we got the Aetherblade airship steering wheel, which we need to buy for regular relics, which I can't do just yet. So we need to complete underground with a reduction of 80% to all healing from 51 to 100. So I am going to do that on stream. Okay, so if you fancy killing some dredge that can be blinded now, I'm going to be on LFG, N -A -A -E -U -L -F -G, and I guess fastest people to get there uh, will, will be able to join on me and we'll get to do that. So here we go. So I'm going to leave that squad. They can't have Logan back so soon while Bran wants Destiny's Edge back. You think that's like a conflict? You can, I can do it in like two days, guys. Promise. What do you mean? What do you mean, Locksaws? Alright, here we go. So we'll do this. The stream delay should be over now and you guys should have a chance. Uh, let me just pick... I love the new UI for this. It's so good. Uh, underground facility, right? This is the one, isn't it? Underground facility, 53. The lowest I possibly can, just because I don't know. I'm not being funny, but I don't know what quality of players we'll get here. Speaking of Lake Doric, do you think ArenaNet saying that every new map in Season 3 was made from scratch decreases the probability of Lake Doric appearing this season? I don't think that's necessarily true, but it might be a clue as to the direction. That's a great point, the other side. I hadn't thought of that at all. I hadn't thought that. That is That does devalue it, doesn't it? That does, that does reduce the chance. Unless they were just talking about the ones they've already done. I mean, I really want Lake Doric, man. Lake Doric would be a full-size map, too. Lake Doric would be, you know, it would be chunky. It would be like another Queensdale. Oh, it would be so good. Come on. And you've already got, like, a lot of it done. You've got old design and stuff in there. Remember how they brought back, um... Uh... What was it? What was it called? The basketball minigame. Whatever that was. Remember how they did that? Well, uh, Lake Doric was the site of bar brawling, which was a heavy environmental weapon style activity. Maybe they could even incorporate that in. I would love to see them do do Lake Doric. I really would. That's the one. That's the main place I want to go now. The main place. I desperately want to go to Lake Doric. You think Garm will die or get hurt, and Bram will realise his mistake? You think Garm will? Yeah, that was a lovely moment in the patch where Garm whimpered. All right, so here we go. Um, not open world. Fractals. Scale fifty one. Underground challenge. So if any of you want to join on me, my LFG's now up. That was ridiculous. Look at that. All right. And uh, we'll just go in. We'll uh, tick off the challenge, mate. Uh, we should just be able to do this. The, uh, we're very unlikely to wipe unless... I mean, this one takes a bit of coordination. If you guys don't know how to do it at all, we could struggle a little bit. You hated that Garm followed. At least he whimpered. But I think it would have been more interesting if Garm refused. I, I, I don't know. I think the whimper covers that, right? I get what you're saying. Oh, God, I'm wrong. What did I do? I did Urban Battleground. How did I click Urban Battleground? I'm a moron. Um, yeah, it, it did kind of suck. that. that but, but I liked that, right? Like one of the points I'm going to make in my brand video, right, is the drama is good for something. Like There's a lot of different things. Don't think that this is my entire opinion, because it's not. But one of the things I mentioned 
It's underground facility. I swear I picked underground facility. I guess it just defaulted to scale one or something. Maybe I missed that. Uh, the drama's good for some things. And, like, that Garm Whimper is an example straight away. That's already a little payoff. That's a little nice moment. Rocks when she says so and she's really awkward about it. That's an epic. That's cool. Not epic, but, you know, these are nice little moments that you can draw out of contriving what they contrived. Hello? All right, so here we go. Challenge mode. This is a more classic challenge mode. Where it's very cut and paste and sim simplistic. All right, that guy instantly died. Do you have AR? I don't think he has much agony with this, but we'll see. So really, guys, you want to watch... I'll turn off join squad. You really want to watch the top left, the health bars of everyone. Just make sure we're sort of okay there. Just asking one minor spoiler. Was the Bo Brown uses Ayers 1 or some other random non-explained one? I'm pretty sure it was, it was Ayers 1. You've worried me now. I thought it was Ayers. Is it not Ayers? Yeah, you like it that there are people hating on, on, on certain parts of the new patch? Yeah, I think that um, it does, in some respects, absolutely. But th there is a slight issue that comes out of it, and it's to do with... the. It's not to do with the way Bram was written, but it's to do with the way something else was written. Yeah, it, it was, it was. I mean, and I like the direction of it. I do. I did another cool iconic weapon coming in. People at work are asking you to do things. No, ignore them, Summeringian. Ignore them. Uh, I, I'm a very tanky build, and I can easily survive on the panel up there. But I kind of don't want to. I mean, these people feel very squishy. I kind of don't want to because uh, usually if I go up and hit that button, everyone's dead over here before I can even support them in any way. How are two people locked out here? Come on, don't, come on, dude. Don't be scared. Come on in. Come on in. You get lots of might. <laughs> Here we go. I'll give you a nice little fire overload. And a cheeky little he heat sink for you. There you go. Alright, good. Okay, if that guy's going to do the panel, he might stealth or something. Oh, no, the CC. That was an annoying CC. That guy's getting low over there. Oh no, he's high. Who's the low? Who's the low person? I guess uh, that tempest is low. So once they both stand on the button, see, look, I, I sort of knew this would happen. Guys, do you not know how to do this encounter? You got to stand on the buttons. One on the left, one on the right, and then it will open this up so that this guy can do the panel. So you're gonna have to stand on the buttons. You can't just kill stuff. You've got to actually stand on the buttons. And I'm going to stand in the middle and make sure nobody dies while they're doing it. And I'm going to draw aggro from a monster that spawns. So, I guess we'll wait for stream delay while everybody hears what I'm saying. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, I drew aggro over to him, I think. No, that's all right. He was reflecting. So, this, this dredge here. Oh, come on. What? I drew him off. Come here. There we go. That guy's not dying. One of us never made it in the room. He's at the entrance dead, which is fine. Why is it still attacking him over there? Oh my god, I'm furious. Stop attacking the man! I'm going to have to keep try and keep reflects on him. There we go. Try again. No one's attacking anyone else. I, this is literally it. It's just two of these guys here now. There we go. <laughs> uh, what do you think about people thinking the scroll came from nowhere? Well, they're wrong. It, it didn't. But, I, I mean, I've got a bit of a discussion on that as well coming up. That won't be in its own video. Um, it, they're wrong to say it's a deus ex machina. They're wrong to say it came out of nowhere. Uh, but does that mean that the way it was already implemented is satisfactory enough? Uh, well, that's where, that's where the real discussion comes from, right? Um, and, it, 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 you know, sometimes it's a question of their, the de dev's intent. Maybe they didn't want it to be a big thing. Maybe it was just supposed to be a nice cheeky little nod for people who watch the lore closely. And I would say that's people who watch the lore very closely. Who see that one. Yes, I know I wasn't standing on the button, Pokey. It was... Oh, my God. It's going to get me angry. Alright, here we go. Wow. 
Wow. All right, just so that you guys know, all right, the idea of this is you stealth and you don't walk into the little robots that are running around, the dredge that are running around. I can't believe I just called them robots. That makes, that's bad. That's like, oh God. But you're, and, and you're supposed to like not get caught and de-stealth as you run bombs up there, right? Now, it's very easy to do, incredibly easy to do. Uh, and one of the things when I'm usually running this, it's quite funny to see pugs failing at it because uh, there's actually an achievement to do the entire encounter without anyone getting seen by any of these. So the way I had to resort to getting that achievement, because people got caught by these so often, people were so inept at just not walking into these red circles. Um, I eventually did it by just telling everyone to wait at the start and just had myself and like a, a close friend doing it with me. I think it was at the time. Or it might have even been Kerry, right? And so we were doing this uh, and that's how we had to resort to getting the achievement. But it's always funny. I got the achievement now. I don't care anymore. It's always funny to see how quickly people fail. And that was probably the fastest I've ever seen it fail. Somebody literally walked out of the cage and went directly into one of the things. Instantly revealed themselves and lost the achievement for the group. For people who didn't have it. In I've never actually seen it go faster than that. I'm judging hard here. I'm so sorry. But that, that was quite incredible. Yeah, you can stack loads of stuff. The timer really isn't the self running out. The timer is the bomb running out. I mean, this is a low scale too, so there's not even that many dredge around. I think the, the number of dredge scale. Here we go. I keep air ordering because I forgot I'm on apothecaries now and I can do a bit more, bit of condi if I actually try a bit harder. I hate his blocking, man. His blocking is so annoying. What is your graphic setting for the game? It seems to run very smooth and good looking. Well, thank you. It might just be because of reshade. Uh, like, if I turn it off, I don't know. Maybe that's what you're looking at. I keep forgetting, we're, we're on 80% reduced healing, and I'm, like, agonying myself as well, which is a further 70% reduction. It's making us all a little bit more squishy. Um, uh, but my settings are... Everything's max. I think I have post-processing on right now. Uh, yeah, my specs are down below beneath the stream. Stream times are there as well, guys. Uh, if, if people are sort of new, just checking out the streams. Um, I do this every day. Friday, uh, sorry, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, same time. Tomorrow we'll be playing Nightfall. We currently have a lottery going on. If you check out the lottery here. Uh, our current prize pool is 190 gold. Hopefully a mod in chat can ping the link. If you want to uh, buy a ticket and try that out, we'll do the drawing for that on uh, tomorrow's stream and we'll see how that's going. 190 gold available for prizes there. Uh, which is pretty good, right? 190 gold prize? The 80% reduction only kicks on the final boss. Really? People are just getting hit hard. What, what's everyone's AR then? Maybe it's just slightly lower AR. This isn't Hello Kitty Online PvP. Does Hello Kitty Online actually have PvP? Alright, here we go. He's pulling and he's got the button. Hopefully he doesn't get fixation. Stay close. Don't walk the don't walk away from the fire over like rah. Here we go. And he's superheated. Uh it's scale fifty ish, so. All right, uh, let me just teach teach you guys something. There, there's usually a bit of animosity on this fight and the uh, the ice elemental equivalent, okay? Usually a bit of animosity because people really don't understand something very basic about this, okay? Um, and you, you're seeing some people on my team do it here as well. Uh, so first thing to understand is you need to pull this guy, unless you can properly, unless you've got a good comp, good players, and you're, you're paying attention, all right? Um... You're probably not going to one burn him. Usually if you're pugging this, you're not going to one burn him. So I wouldn't bother trying to do that, okay? So there's a lot of merit, especially if you're running lots of Tempest, to hold the guy in place. And you can do that for a little while to try and get as much damage as possible. But generally speaking, for the smoothest experience with pugs on this, as you're seeing here, you really want to keep him moving quite a lot. Because it's just too annoying if he starts healing when he gets the damage reduction... And so you want to keep moving him under these pots of oil to keep this buff here superheated on him, which as you can see is about to run out in eight seconds. 
So I think most people generally understand that, and they're okay. And, and, and that's not a huge problem, all right? However, Arena added a raid mechanic to this recently, which is fixation. So you can see this guy right now is fixated. That means the boss is only going to charge that one guy. So the first thing to know is it's very important for that one guy to always be at the next pot. Because that means that the boss, in theory, should always also be moving to the next pot. And then the superheat is fine. That's also fine. And I think people generally understand that too. However, here's where most pugs completely mess up. All right? And I'll demonstrate it to you. All right? So what's going to happen here? Oh, I should have dodged at least some of that. So here's what's going to... Unless, unless we kill him. We might kill him. This guy's fixated. He should run to the next pot. I'm going to rebound that because I don't trust that people might not get hit. He's going to run to the next pot. Now, here's what pugs do. What I'm doing right now. All the time they do this, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you something. At, at the lower scales, this isn't so bad. But if you're doing your T4s and you're standing inside the boss, you're making a mistake, all right? In pug runs. The re and, and now, you might be tempted to do that if you're a melee character or whatever. It's not hard to equip a rifle if you're a warrior. It's not hard to equip a, a longbow if you're a dragon hunter, okay? It's not hard to equip a hammer if you're a rev. Just on one of your swaps, right? So that you can haze and do damage while he's moving. But what you need to understand on T4, right? Is people think now that fixation's there. They think, oh, this guy's fixated. So it's okay if I'm constantly up the boss's ass and I'm constantly in him. It's totally fine. But what happens is you cause the boss's AI to detect someone's in melee and they will keep stopping to do their animations, all right? Particularly the ice elemental will keep stopping. So it doesn't matter that the fixated guy is stood over here and in perfect position. If yours constantly up the boss's ass, if you're a ranger and you've constantly got a pet on him all the time, it slows this down so much. And if you ever try to explain to someone Oh, you're making the AI stop and stand still to do his animations over and over and over again and making this so much slower than it has to be. You usually get a snarky response from the pug who says, Ah, oh, no, fixation is a mechanic and I'm not fixated. No, you're wrong. You're still slowing it down. Don't be in melee, all right? It's really annoying. Now, it's different if you're in a pre-made. It's different if you know that there's some bar of quality that people are going to be dodging. And all those point-blank attacks as well uh, can, can knock a lot of pugs out too. It's really frustrating. It's a really basic little thing. Just don't melee the guy. All right? Simple. Um, so, yeah. If I can impart a little bit of knowledge to make your fractal runs a little bit smoother to just a couple of people watching this stream, please. Don't melee the guy. All right? Even if you're not fixated. You can still deep. It's fine. Look, the thing is, if that superheat runs out, even for a, like a very short period of time... It's completely overdoing what... You know, I know you're seeing the big pretty numbers and stuff, but you'd see even bigger, even prettier numbers if it was a genuine concerted effort from all five of you where you're all pushing all your banners out and you're pushing your might out and you're pushing your fury out and so forth, right? It's, I, I mean, SCX makes a joke there saying, WP such an elitist, expecting people to know basic mechanics, Kappa. The thing is, I don't actually think it's that basic. To be able to explain in party chat to pugs that, yes, fixation is a thing. Let's all establish you. We know what the fixation is. This isn't an argument about fixation. But also, you need to think about the fact you're still triggering boss AI because you're in melee. To explain all of that, to go through the whole rigmarole, that's actually not quite so basic. And that's really annoying to do. And most people, you're in the middle of a fight. Let's point this out as well. When people are making the mistake, you're in the middle the fight and you're frustrated and it's annoying it's going on too long um it's a lot to type out usually if you call someone out people get really snippy they get they don't take it as genuine advice they take it as a personal attack they get and then they go on and they think that you're the stupid one you're the stupid one because oh this person doesn't know m m fixation it's okay that i'm doing this because fixation and, and, and like it's this whole thing you go through every time to the point where it's like oh there's no point even explaining it in the end so uh so yeah anyway I thought I'd mention that. All right, let's. Uh, I'm going to leave that part. That was awesome running with you guys. You guys did top. That was awesome. I'll give five more people a chance to come and play, though, including you, if you want to. Uh, we'll go for one more thing. Or maybe even two more. We'll see. So, legendary backpacks. Let's do another fractal here. So, the next one's the Aetherblade challenge mode. We need to beat Engineer Frizz with an 80% reduction to all healing. So, this is going to be the electric walls and so forth. And that should be pretty fun. So, again, 51 to 80 it's weird that all the final stuff for the legendary is 51 to 80 to 100. It's like, did they, uh, 
Did they not originally anticipate going up to 100 scales with Heart of Thorns, but they originally going to do 75? They probably should have only done 75. It would have made them scale a bit quicker. The problem with fractals for me, the biggest problem right now, that fractals are in a much better place, but the biggest problem is up to about the first 60 fractals. Honestly, everything before this solid ocean is just easy peasy nonsense stuff that doesn't really teach people mechanics well enough. I think they should start scaling a lot harder, a lot quicker. I think the current T4 experience should be like your T3 experience at, at, at the latest. But hey. Uh, Alright, so... Let's go for like... Um, sorry, I forgot what I'm doing. Aetherblade, right? Aetherblade facility? Or is it just called Aetherblade? It's just called Aetherblade, right? So it's all the way up here. 65? Let's head on in. What should you get for your second pinnacle skin? Dude, nice. Second pinnacle skin. Uh, I like the staff. I love the staff. I've been running the staff on my DPS set. I think it looks great. I've been using it instead of Bifrost. Um, maybe get an underwater one. I, I One of my friends is like super heavy competing on the AP leaderboards. I used to PvP with the guy. And uh, he was one of the first people to get a pinnacle thing. And I think he got the first ever uh, uh, pistol. I mean, that, that would have been pretty exciting to be one of the first ones. All right, so we're on scale 65. I'm going to throw out the LFG again. Get ready, guys. Fingers on buzzers. Go, go, go. Freaking Lion's Arch music. That's so quick. We're getting them. This is brilliant. I think they decided that T4 would be a bit too much with 80% healing reduction. Yeah, that that's fair. But then also the... Uh, well, okay, fair enough. What, what, I, what throws me with it a little bit is like... Or, or made me say that is that... This is like T1. This is like T2. This is like T3. And so is this. It's like... I, I don't know. This could have been T4s. No, no, no. This is still T3. T2, isn't it? Yeah, this is tier 2 stuff. It's weird. I don't know. All right. Um, yeah, let's go on in. Four Necros. Jesus. This is weird to me, guys. You really don't have to run Necros. It really does weird me out seeing so many Necros in Fractals. I mean... <sighs> It's like the rate. It, it, one of the things that worries me most. Well, it doesn't worry me, but it, it really opens my eyes a lot. Quite often, is people do care way too much about build meta. Like mechanics are the fi even in fractals. It's much better that you know the mechanics of the, the the fractals and you just play them and get used to them and learn to dodge. Like like on this fractal, okay, you want to be dodging the thugs war banners. If you have never seen the animation for a thug casting a war banner and you come in here on a T4, that's probably more important. If you just learn that, you don't have to cheese it out with necros like this. Like people are so scared to run anything other than necros. 90% of the time it's like, well no, that's not true. Maybe like yeah, it's it's it's, it's too many. Too many people will just run necros. Or, like, they think the only support has to be a druid. Oh. I'll tell you what, guys. I wing it every day in Fractals. Uh, I play with a couple of people, like, every day that I know. And we'll do... We'll, 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 like, currently, we're running mostly Rev, Glass, Tempest, and me on support. For any Fractal. And the, the, the other two slots are always just pugs. It's just... So, watch this guy. Okay. I'm going to try and blind it, which is what I usually do on support. Okay. There, this one here is casting it. That does an epic amount of damage. Necro obviously reduces a lot with all the weakness and stuff. And four Necros is pretty crazy because of all the Epis. This is actually going to be quite funny to see. I very rarely play with this many Necros. Again, because I'm nearly always with, you know, a Glass Tempest and or a Rev. Um, but yeah, we, we always just throw it open to Pugs. And it's, you know, it's really not a big deal. None of us are running Necros. The majority of the team isn't Necros, and we never, we, we very rarely, if ever, wipe. It, mostly, I'll tell you what we wipe on. The end of Thorma Nova, and the, the friggin' uh, Anomaly, because we suck, and, well, and we fall. Or particularly, I'll say it about myself, I suck and I fall. This will be quite nice that I'm stacking some burns here, that then those guys are going to be epying. Because burn is like the one condi that they're not going to be doing, and then they'll just be bouncing it all around. Here I could blink up and disable it early, but whatever. Did somebody go up the ramp up there without disabling these? That's real nice of you. Oh, God. I think I should have died there. I think I ran a little bit early there. There we go. Good job. 
My favourite groups are when they're all one class. Five thieves, five guardians. Yeah, that does sound pretty cool. That does sound pretty cool. I, I, I enjoy that style of thing. Uh, with GW1, I used to enjoy that quite a lot. I still do. Like, look at the most recent uh, build video I did for GW1. <laughs> Friggin' all Mesmers. Well, almost. I suppose I could have had a fast cast healer or something if I'd really thought about it. A lot of people only have AR on Necros now. A lot, also, people run cheese because it makes it easier and more AF. Well, yeah, I, I, I understand that. To I totally appreciate that. that, that and, it, you know, I'm, I'm not judging people too hard. Maybe, maybe all it is is that I value playing a variety of builds more. Like, it keeps it fresh for me. Like, I fractaled on Cleric, uh, like, just within the realm of support, I fractaled on Clerics, I fractaled on Apothecaries, I fractaled on Magis, I fractaled on min Minstrels. I've done, like, every, every healing power significant stat in the game. I should have Lightning Flash on here, really. Is somebody over at that one over there, or should I get it? I'll get this one, then. Oh, no, he's there. Uh, let me come through here. There we go. There's like an extra button we have to get these days as well. Hopefully one of them can do it. If not, I'll cleanse myself and... Oh, God. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna press that and then try and get to... Oh, good. I got the... Ah! We get it. We get it. You two press F. Press F. Why? No. Ah! Oh, can I not do it? Do you need to flash? Can you not run in time? I don't think you can run in time. We need one of the other players to go to... Come on, that's a really easy one to get to, guys. It's right near the entrance. I'm going to stand on this box now. There we go. He's at it. Who's... There we go. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, maybe I just care a lot more about uh, swapping the builds up a lot. You know? Do you ever miss the build diversity of Guild Wars 1? No, because there wasn't that much. Nostalgia goggles. Uh, I'm sorry. It is. There were more potentials, but not more things that people would run. No way. No way at all. Not by a long, 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 long margin. Guild Wars 2, over its life, has experienced far more very distinctly different feeling builds and playstyles than Guild Wars 1 ever did. Ever. I, I really do stand by that. Now, the gameplay that the Guild Wars 1 combat system and build system uh, provided uh, may have been more fun in certain places. Like, the very competitive PvP, I think, does offer a value that Guild Wars 2 has never attained. But, uh, in, in general... I mean, face it, if you if you GW1, uh, GW1, after hard mode and heroes, you were running Sabway, Discord Way, or Glaive Way. That was about it. And you it, it, you just do map after map after map. Let your necros carry you map after map after map after map after map. It's one of those, like, fallacies. One of these, like, mistakes that I think a lot of people make quite often. When they think, oh, just because there's more options, that means they were all utilised. And they just so weren't. A lot of the Guild Wars 1 skills were duplicates of each other, too. And also, a lot of our criteria for uh, defining something as a different build goes for Guild Wars 1, but not for Guild Wars 2 for some reason. Like, if I swap a single utility, if I swap all three of my utilities in Guild Wars 2, which I frequently do. Let's interrupt that. All right, never mind. Which I frequently do... That doesn't count as a new build, no? Why not? Well, we don't really think of it. We don't value it as a new build. And yet, just a single skill swap in Guild Wars 1 apparently counts. Right? And we want to talk about all that potential there. It's just unfair. It's it's not... It's not realistic, really, I don't think. Before GW2 came out, the devs talked about... Uh, having this kit idea and having less builds overall... But more of them were useful. There was less chance for someone to run something absolutely horrendously trash. And I, I still stand by them on that. I, it was one of the things that got me into Guild Wars 2. And it, it still is to this day. I think they did well with it. And you know, it, it's just, it, it's apples and oranges. Think about this too. Guild Wars 2. Hold on, I'm going to get my instab for this. You guys might like to as well. Because don't forget we have reduced healing. Uh, Guild Wars 2, like, think about environmental weapons and think about stuff like that, you know, there's just... Oh, I already have it. I'm a moron. I'll run, uh, food on this, though. We'll see how good people are at jumping over the walls. Should be funsies. Don't forget, you're gonna agony each other, so if you're just gonna try and cheese it on the boxes, only a couple of you can do it. 
Like every little environmental weapon you get, every little special action hotkey, those are skills. In every sense, as a Guild Wars 1 ability was a skill. Is that a different build? It's just, it's not, it's not comparable. What we're talking about, really, is the variety in the gameplay. And there's a huge variety. Not only are the builds more distinct, a, necro a Curse's Necromancer in Guild Wars 1 did not feel very distinct or different to a Domination Mesmer. And, and you, you're never really going to convince me otherwise of that. Like, the, the similarities between Insidious Parasite and, and Empathy are, are very, 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 diff uh, very, very small. There are not many differences, okay? Or like running Spoil Victor versus Backfire in Visions of Regret. It's just, it's not... They were casters that stood at a certain range with the same weapons and did the same animations and just had slightly different effects on their hexes. I just tanked that and I really shouldn't have. I was going to jump it. Um, in Guild Wars 2, the difference between a Rev and a Warrior... Oh my god, I never managed to get it. You can just jump those, by the way. Shit, I can't believe that. Oh my god, the rally. Heroes, I'm dragging us down. Oh no! Uh, the, the, the difference between um, the builds in Guild Wars 2 are huge. You might say there's less poten potential for them, but a Malix Rev feels different to a Hammer Power Rev. Feels different to a Ranger Longbow. They all feel very, very, very distinct from one another. What I'm worried about here is getting pulled into a wall. Usually I get the aggro on all the pulls, which usually I quite like because it frees up the people who actually do the damage. Hopefully I can just keep some reflects rolling. Where's all this confusion coming from, man? There we go. That's a good opportunity to do some damage. I mean, Necros are great for this as well. Guys, it's actually awesome you pick Necros. I'm judging you too hard. The Necros are awesome here. Basically, what happens every time one of these walls goes through one of the golems, they start blocking and dazing around them. And uh, the Condies will just keep pulsing through. That was nice. That was pretty smooth, guys. That was cool. The current prize pool has gone up to 302.4 gold, guys, for the lottery. 302 gold. We have a 302 gold giveaway going on tomorrow. Seriously. You might want to get involved. Could be pretty fun. Just have a think about it. Oh, God. All right. They block everything, but conditions still tick. Yeah, yeah. So you can't apply new ones, but the old ones will keep rolling. All right, is there another thing we can do, maybe? Was that actually... Did, was that what we needed? Did it Did it ding? Did I mess that up? No, 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 it dinged. So now we've got to do my trend timed at 98. Do you guys have... Well, I'll redo it again, so everyone's got an opportunity to come in again. So 98, my trin. This was the old 100. It's slow, and it takes ages. I'd never done it at 98, so I'm wondering what it'll be like. Um, but so this is a T4, guys. You're going to need about 145 Agony Resist for this. Some of the highest amounts of Agony Resist you need in the game. So, uh, I'll, I'll do this. My Trin Challenge as well. we got to kill it pretty quick. I, I've heard it's easy, but I, I don't know. I've never done it, so we'll see. Has Matt, has Matt touched Guild Wars 2 since Heart of Thorns? I think he has every now and then. I remember when, uh... Uh, Out of the Shadows came out. He he played it, but I, I don't know for how long. I, I, I think it was maybe a day or two tops. I, I'm not sure. I don't really talk to him about Guild Wars 2 very much. I haven't spoken to him for a while, actually. Reminds me, I need to message him on Skype. We were trying to catch each other about a week ago. We kept missing each other. Alright, here we go. Uh, LFG. Fractals. This. 98 challenge. Okay. Oh, what? What? Yeah, yeah. It's just kill it quick, right? It's There's not like a, a moat in there, is there? I don't think there's a moat. We don't have to do the moat, do we? Oh, I keep clicking competitive. It's the C. Keeps getting to me, guys. This looks interesting as well. Can someone tell me in chat? Does this jungle worm omelette, which is the equivalent of the infinite potions, or the, just the potions, does that stack on top of the potions or no? Because it looks like a different effect. Yeah, it just says complete my train challenge. Beat my train in under 25 minutes. So if there is a moat, I don't think we need to trigger it. 
WP, how much AR do I have right now? 153. And you need uh, for to do a, to do a scale 100, uh, nightmare 100. You need 150. So I'm just over what I need. Chaos Law says, I finally caught one of your streams. Just so you know, I watch all your videos because I find your voice so relaxing to the point I sometimes go to sleep and listen to it. Wow, thank you very much. You're not the only one to have said that. Have a good time, but not too good. Let's end Again, it only counts from starting the boss, so don't worry about the champ at the start and people loading in. All right, that's fine. Well, they made the champ easier to kill, apparently, didn't they? I'll actually run some damage on this. Oh, God. Salvage all. Please don't fill up my inventory too bad. Oh, thank God. It's always a gamble whether that'll work. Sometimes it just spams you with too many different varieties of luck. Okay, I guess, look, Ellen Keel's held in them there. Dropping blinds. The I, there's no need for me to call any anything out because you guys aren't going to hear because of stream delay. Did I reset the group? I did, didn't I? Are these the same guys? No, but we got double Necro again. Oh, we got a Chrono and a Glass Tempest. I quite like that. It's not bad. You're sorry, you're just insecure about your sexuality when it comes to WP. My voice used to be a lot more attractive. I need to start changing it. I changed it once without trying. I should be able to change it by trying. You are, guys. We, today we're playing. Uh, I don't even know how. I don't even know how. It's over. Rip. British. There's new ads, my trend summons at 25. Yeah, I, I've done the my trend, the final scale before. I've just never done that. I, I I only just dinged this part of the collection, so I've never beat it uh, with the specific intent of doing it fast. In theory, it should be a bit easier now because it's gone two scales down. I don't know how much that changed. Oh my god, four agony, guys. Ow. Remember, you don't want to stand directly on top of one another on this. Okay. He didn't die too much quicker than normal, I don't think. <clears throat> Natural voice, fake voice. Take it from a grill. Natural voice is better than the fake voice. Well, my old voice wasn't fake. It, was, it wasn't fake. That was how I talked. That was just me speaking. It was it, 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 at worst. It was fake because I was like nervous about sounding like I have a high pitch. And these days, I'll just go wildly all over. And I don't really think about it anymore. But it was a real voice. The accent was real. You're saying it would be fake if I went back now? Well, if I, I sort of feel like if you do it enough, it will... Uh, so, yeah, let's just hold here. Oh, I should be running cleanse. Oh. Yeah, I should be running cleanse. I, I don't know. The Necros, maybe, if they're running Plague Signet, they can pull some. Reflect it back onto... Maybe they don't want the cleanse. We'll see. I don't know how my chin really feels with a lot of Condi. We're doing good at getting her stacks off. So, for those who may not know, I know there will be a couple of you out there. The way that this fight works is you've got this guy, Horik. Now, what Horik does is he fires his cannon at you. And once sometimes it's this electric thing. And what the electric thing does is it hurts a shield my Trin has. Uh, that stops her from being able to take any damage. So, she's invulnerable... But because we stand her in Horik's gunfire, watch this, it's coming in. And now it's going to land on her. And what that does, because she's in it, that's hurting her as well as us. He's like friendly firing her. And uh, and so that allows us to do some damage. And then after after she takes enough damage, she's going to be like, shit, I don't like this. And she's going to run away and re recharge her shield while we have to defend ourselves from her cronies. So you go. So Horik's going to unleash the cannons. Horik goes up there. We got some thumpers. And now they're just going to spam. And this is like the original Guild Wars 2 bullet hell sort of sequence. Um, you just want to stand out of the way as best you can. Horik shoots lightning. The other guys shoot the fire. I think is what, what what's going on on here. You get agonied if you get hit by any of this. This used to be a lot harder. Or maybe it's just because I run support now and I don't really ever think about it. You've also got the other instability. This bomb going off on me. This is the other instability that goes on. So sometimes tentacles will spawn and all kinds of other, all manner of other things. Um, I think they might revamp this. This is pretty high on the list. The top one, I think, if we're talking about fractal overhauls, I think the highest chance next is Molten Boss. I was talking about this last night. I think Molten Boss is easily the highest. Molten Boss is getting farmed probably a bit too quick for how they like. They probably don't like the 40 farm too much. Uh, they want people to do a range of fractals, not just the same one the whole time. Oh, so there you saw what's a beautiful thing. Okay. Um... 
So as it, so my twin has an ability where she'll target the person furthest away and she'll blink to them before unleashing a big attack. And what what this is quite a, 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 a hassling thing. Because what it means... Here you go. If I stand here... Oh, never mind. It didn't work. Well, look. She's going to come. This is quite an annoying thing. Um, because usually she'll be in the blue. And then she'll blink out because someone's ranging. It's really annoying. Here she's just in it, which is good. Uh, she'll blink out because someone's ranging. Um, well, so what you can do as a support Tempest on this fight that I've always enjoyed is you've got so many reflects for the team. If you see she stood in the lightning field and someone's ranging, like right now, I can pop a reflect on everyone. And instead of her blinking away, it will be my friend who blinks into her. Which will sort of blink my friend into danger, but it will take her stacks off and I can heal the friend up. And so you can stop that annoying thing happening with pugs, okay? It's pretty cool. If you time it correctly. So far, this has been pretty comfortable. I'm not even healing very well, and we're doing very well. So her shield's gone again, and then we recycle. So, uh, yeah, I think that this one's got a pretty high chance for having a revamp at some point. I'd love to see them use the airship. You know how in Capricorn, uh, the boat actually sails in in the middle of the instance? I'd love the airship to sail in in the middle of this fractal. Uh, I think they can change the phases. Each phase should feel a bit more different. They should, and and again, because this is like the original bullet hell, and they've had such incredible feedback from the uh, from the nightmare fractal. If they're seeking to do more stuff like that, we might see them do something much more interesting here. And instead of this being like a time gated sequence, it can be like the nightmare fractal where you're actually like capturing nodes and you can push it through a bit quicker. I think they can up the intensity, the range of abilities that she's doing. Make this more of a boss rather than a long grind, which is what it currently feels like. So I think this has got a pretty high chance for a revamp, but also Molten Boss. Molten Boss, again, has got like... If you remember the original Living World Season 1 uh, instance, it had all of those um, like vents that were like seemed to be inspired by the last mission of Halo Combat Evo Evolved. And it had... Uh... uh it just had a lot more play space than we actually get in the fractals now. So uh, what I think they might do as well is give it like the swamp treatment. Where they make the fractal a bit longer. They make it a bit harder. There's a sort of bullet heli kind of feeling thing there from the uh, from that guy as well. So here you go. Here's a blink. And he should blink in instead of her blinking out. Oh, I, I was going to rebound Earth there. But I didn't do that properly. Um, it's okay. Frost Aura is better. Uh, so yeah, I, I think um, in Swamp, if you remember, they had like the optional Mossman or Bloom Hunger. I think what you might see they do instead is uh, with the Molten Boss, there's, there's basically four bosses there. There's the two that you originally fight. Then there's the overcharged versions. Now the way that the fight currently works is the second one you kill is the one that gets overcharged. And they're distinct enemies. I think they'll revamp Molten, call in it here. And I think that they're going to make us fight all four variants, no matter what the order is. They'll take that strategy, in air quotes, away. Now, some of you might be upset about that because you might like the... Sorry, that was my bad. So, oh, well, good. She wandered in. This has been nice. Um, some of you might might, uh, might like that strategy. Of, oh, which boss do you kill first? Each one has different strengths and weaknesses. But let's face it. You always kill the same one, no matter what. I mean, the, 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 the 40 farm, actually, I think, kills the one that a normal run wouldn't. But there, there isn't really any strategy. There isn't the dynamism there that, that you can like, that you imagine there to be. And so uh, I think that they'll probably make us fight all of them. And then they could just add more phases. I reckon we could kill the first two Martin bosses. And then you can run up into that vents area. And you can destroy the facility properly again. You can flee from the overcharging ones. They, they can make that a lot cooler. So now that she's at 25, they do an annoying thing. All right. Remember, this used to be the final fractal. This was scale 100 before Nightmare came in. So I think the devs thought, well, we've got to do something special with it. And what they did was they added another phase to the fight where she's actually going to get all of her health back. All of her health. And that's why this feels like a grind. Um, and you have to do it all again. These phases won't happen, but you have to do the whole thing again. It's just not that fun. It's just not that good. They also spawned some ads at this point. Um, which I've never ever wiped to. And I've never really felt do that much pressure. But I sort of feel like they have to be designed that way because it's just annoying. If you wipe now on this fight to those ads, that would just be infuriating, wouldn't it? That would just be so annoying. Um, but the whole way this is designed, so I, I really think this is pretty hard on the list. Uh, for, uh, for taking a revamp. Let's have like three epic boss fractals and then maybe Jade more at some point too. But I don't know. 
This was quite amusing the first time you did it. If you don't know there's ads, yeah. Oh, sorry. What? Oh, they got rid of it, did they? They got rid of the final phase. Oh, so it's not 100 anymore. So she doesn't fully reset. Is that what they've done there? There are ads still. That are summoning, that are spawning. You know, I'm going to eat my words now. And we're going to wipe on this, this phase. It's going to be amazing. Oh, time warp. Time warp, uh, water overload. Don't mind if I do. Actually, I don't think that worked. Because I started the animation a little bit too quickly. Thinking you were so close and you had time on the clock. Yeah, that's true. We're trying to do this quick, aren't we? I think we've been quick enough. I think our shield's gone down fast enough. We haven't been in here. Wait, is it 20 minutes they want? I hope we get this. I mean, the epi should be rocking hard here. Because we've got lots of uh, different targets that we can go for. Everyone's quite high on health. I wonder if these guys are running Parasitic Contagion as well. I'll try and give people some might. We obviously don't have Phalanx Strength, so you got to focus on that a little bit more. Move this away. And the NPCs we fight here, I don't think really are NPCs that were in the Living World Season 1 instance, as far as I remember. But yeah, one of the AMA things I found interesting was that they, they sort of have, it sounds like, a reasonable amount of progress for the next Fractal revamp. And they even wanted to push it out on the same update as the Nightmare Fractal. How insane would that have been if they'd managed to do that? I mean, good job to the Fractal guys. They're really pulling it out. I don't know what happened with the Fractal team at the release of Heart of Thorns, but it was shoddy showing. I'm sorry. I mean, I know it's, it shouldn't be my place to criticise, but Fractals at Heart of Thorns, it was bad. I don't, I really... But, I mean, they've really, really pulled out the stops. They've been doing some hard graft, and they're, they're doing so much better at the moment. Here we go. Let's burn her down. Yay! Legendary backpack at infinitum. Nice, guys. Too easy. And, yeah, like another, another component here. Oh, sorry. 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 There, isn't there something I have to do on the airship as well? Then I have to hand in a uh, a book to this person over here. I think I have to do this. I'm observing things. I need a new guidebook. Here's a book for you. Thanks. Now I can finish that important thing I'm doing. So there you go. Usually that's the time gated mechanic that usually people struggle with, or or would just slow them down when they were originally getting this. Okay, cool. That was awesome, guys. All right, well, I think that might be the stream done, guys, for today. I, I'm, I'm very happy that we uh, all enjoyed watching the Fractals. Uh, again, just some updates. Tomorrow, we'll be drawing the prize pool for the lottery. So do check that out. That's going to be awesome. We're going to be in Guild Wars 1 as we do it. But, you know, we'll have a little Guild Wars 2 section at the start or whatever. That should be a really fun stream, especially for those that you have been watching a lot of Guild Wars 1. There probably won't be a video on, Guild, on, on my channel announcing the fact that I'm live. Um, the Spud Club will also on Monday be wiping the Magical Forest. We're getting rid of it and we're going to make Magical Forest version 2.0. And we're going to have like a dedicated trophy area if you guys want to make one. Dedicated hollow area. We've we, we, we got so many more toys and things to play with. A lot more of you will get to have fun with that if you never got to before. Um, uh, just to clarify, the second branch probably won't be happening. And uh, starting from next week, I will start to talk to you about something else with the guild. Where we're probably going to kick everyone from the guild. Every single player. And then you can request to come back in. If you do that, you get back in with the exact same rank you had before. Everything's exactly like normal for you. But it's only the people who request to come back in who will get back in. And hopefully that will cut out a lot of our dead weight. A lot of people who don't rep much. A lot of people who don't care about it. A lot of people who are active but really don't give a fuck about Spud. And so hopefully we'll go back to like 300 out of 500 members online at all times. And uh, and that will be the purge. And that could end up being a regular thing for the guild. I don't know. But that that will be something we talk about a little bit more. Everyone will get kicked. Uh, but that won't be for a while, guys. Don't worry about that. That's not going to be for like a fortnight, maybe longer. It's uh, just one of the ways we're, we're going to try and cut away at the rotting underbelly of inactive players. Well, it's not inactive players. It's people who play but don't don't play for Spud, which I think is a huge amount of us. Because we can't open a second branch, it's sort of a way to you know try and push it, improve the quality a bit. But yeah, all right. So, uh, well, hold on. I, I just said all of that. We got the omelet. We got the mallet. That's just stuff in the open world and stuff. Yeah. 
So that's fine. And then we got to get the two gifts. So that's fine. Yeah, there you go, guys. Thanks for helping me do those challenges in uh, the Fractals of the Mist. Hopefully, I'll get my legendary back, my second one, after the PvP one, uh, at some point before the account tour. But uh, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the stream. Let's see. Is that is the Raiden thing going on? I think it was when I started. Um, let me see. Because I will give them a host. This is a pretty big host for them. And it was a cool idea that they had. I don't know how it went in the end. No, it's not going on anymore. Well, that's a shame. Uh, well, I will host Particlar because I used to like some of his build videos, even though I haven't watched a couple for a while. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And um, I will see you on my channel very shortly for the story video. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for coming. Catch you next time.